everybody. Hello, everybody. I noticed that when I talked about the hitchhiking ghosts last Monday, I was a little bit loud. So let me bring it down. Uh, I was very excited about the hitchhiking ghosts, and I hope you are too. And today, we're going to tell you how you can uh, purchase them in pre-sale. And without further ado, let's do that right now. What you do is go here. Quickly take a picture of this page. And, um, and that way you can know how to type this into your, you know, search engine and it'll take you right to the store. The ghosts are on the front page. Click on the picture of the ghosts and you can pay for them. Now on my store site, that is the paid in full. Turns out that that seems to be the only way that you can just click and pay in full. So if you want to do one of the other plans, the, uh, if you want to do the, uh, uh, three month plan, which is paying 400 a month starting this month, uh, October, November, December, then you can pay the three month plan and you will get your ghosts, uh, hopefully December or next year. And, uh, you need to let me know if it's important for you to get them before December. And then secondly, there's the six month plan, which is $250 times six months, which means you would get them next year in March. Now you'll notice if you do the math that it's going to be a little bit more expensive, but hey, this, uh, this is, um, this is so you can sort of spread it out, but it does, it does create more work for me. So unfortunately it's going to cost you more. Uh, but anyway, that's what you do. You hit me up in the comments. If you want to do one of those second, the payment plans, the 400 a month or the 250 a month, just write to me in messenger or, uh, you know, um, let me know, get to me somehow, email me, uh, go to my website, which is terry at terryharden.com and click on questions or whatever for more information, whatever. And you can uh, ask me a question and we can deal with it there. But the launch is official. Woo! <laughs> Pre-sale launch. Now, don't feel like it's like you've got a race to get here. You've picked a number. And it's yours until you tell me that you've changed your mind and you don't want to get them, okay? That's what it's about. And if you're listening today or in the comfort of YouTube, welcome YouTubers. Those of you who have come uh, to me through YouTube, I want to welcome you. Many of you have written me lovely comments about waking up and having your tea or coffee and watching me via your streaming device. And that just tickles me. So uh, thank you so much for, for mentioning that to me. It's awful cute. Yum. Okay. So that's what you do right here. We're going to focus on this a bit in case you pop in and you go, oh, I forgot. Where do I go? And you can just watch this. It's been all of what, uh, three minutes. So you don't have to wait through my hours of ask me anything. I'll probably post it uh, uh, here and there throughout the Ask Me Anything simply because people like to join us late and peek in. You know, who else talks for two or three hours? <laughs> but uh, that's what I wanted you to have here today is that, yeah, is to know how to come and get the ghost. And if you want to pay in full, that's the least uh, uh, it, that's the, the, the best deal. I've, I've actually discounted that one a little bit because a, I'd like you to buy the full set. That's the easiest thing on me, but B, because I think it would be good for you. Also, what I should have done is, um, and I don't know if I did. So let me just look here to see if I did. I don't know if I did. I meant to, I really meant to. Uh, don't know if I can do it. Hold on, guys. Let me just grab something here and see if it'll come up. And uh, just hang in there with me for a second because I just realized that one thing I should do for you guys that would make life easier is to... See, even you guys get to see a little bit of my my thought process, which is can sometimes be be scary. Okay, there we go.
There we go. There it is. Okay. So if you don't know what I'm talking about with these hitchhiking ghosts and you want to know all the information on how they look, how they illuminate, how beautiful they're going to look on your shelves, and the pricing, I want you to go here. If you're on YouTube, you can simply uh, Google Hitchhiking Ghosts and scroll down to Terry Harden, Haunted Mansion Hitchhiking Ghosts. Uh, you can scroll down until you see me going like this. <laughs> and that will be this video right here. Okay, it's about 20 minutes long, but it talks only about the ghosts. Okay, so if you're one of those people who's like, man, she talks a lot. And yes, I do. With COVID-19, I've actually added to my talking because I want you guys to have a happy place to be during a time when maybe the world around you is a little anxious. Leaves you a little anxious, maybe a little anxious. No, it does me sometimes. So uh, that's why I do it and that's why I talk a long time. But you can pop in and out. You can pause me and uh, continue at a different time. And then I will be putting these big long videos into short little bites. And if you have a fun title for what you would call it, uh, I'm calling it, take a bite at it. No, that's not what I was gonna say. Anyway, uh, but but we're gonna call them Little Bits or something like that, Terry Harden's Little Bits, or uh, Thought of the Day, or Ask Me a Question, here's number one. Questions asked, something. Anyway, it's gonna be titled and it's gonna be these broken down. So if you're someone who has a short intention, attention span, then uh, don't apologize, I get it, all right? Okay. I love you guys. I'm looking back here at how dark it is back there. And I'm like, why is that so dark? I got to fix that. Um, but anyway, there you go. All right. Excellent. 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 Uh, so that's where you go to learn about the ghosts. And here is where you go to get your ghosts. And then, as I said, I'm also teaching pumpkin sculpting classes. I'll show you a few pumpkins here in a moment. And you can go here put pumpkin class in the search box and it will show you my video uh, and uh, my DVD and uh, pumpkin tool special and it'll tell you what days my virtual classes are. If you're someone who doesn't really want to sculpt the pumpkin but you want to see me at work, could get a little boring because it won't be me time lapsing, but uh, you're welcome to. And then there's a playlist on YouTube that shows me sculpting quite a few pumpkins so you can Take a look at that and see that. And then I just dropped last Monday a video about how to choose a pumpkin and why you want to choose it. So you might be interested in that too. All right, there you go. Here's where it is. We'll pop this up again later, but uh, there you go. All right, so welcome everybody. And here is Ask Me Anything. I think the ghosts are still available. There's still some available, I think. It's a limited edition of 100 and I think 70 are spoken for. So there's still 30 out there that are like needing to be adopted. So if you want to adopt them, they're amazing. They're beautiful. I will give you a sneak peek if you're someone who didn't get that opportunity. I'm going to give you a quick sneak peek. Let me just, for some reason, my, there it goes. You know, for some reason, my iPad just decides to do its own thing. So I'm just going to... Um, Get into albums. Let's go back to albums. There we go. Makes life a lot easier. Okay. Where did my ghosts go? Okay, this is very interesting. I love when this happens and I'm like, okay, where's my ghosts? Where are they? There they are. Okay, you little stinkers. You were hiding, weren't you? Okay, so here they are. Lit. You notice that I've, uh, they're on a base, they're separate, they're not all together, they're on a base and they're separate, and they are illuminating, that is in the dark. So why do you love it? Because that's the lighting system. This is the way they look on your shelf, and you can see that I had a light on in my cabinet, and the light shows the little bases that they're on, but they're separate. They're, they're separate. Here's another one, see, on the various shelves. So now these are the shelves, the lights are off, and they can just tuck in anywhere you want to put them on, or you can put them together like this, or you can put them side by side by side by side like that. Okay? So there's your quick peek 
But if you want a full-on explanation, go to that video I just showed you. All right? Okay, without much further ado, ask me anything. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. All right. Thank you again to Leo Holzer for the questions. I'm actually digging to find them. There they are. Yes, here they are. One of the things I say, and before I get started and you ask me anything, is that if you're someone who has been dreaming of posting on a page or getting dipping a toe in creating your social media platform, you should do it. You absolutely should do it. Um, those of you who have been with me a long time know that I didn't know how to turn my phone when I first did Facebook. It was vertical. I couldn't get it to go the other way. And you can still see that video. I think what I'm going to do is put a link in my on my YouTube channel uh, to that video, so you can see just how messed up it was. Really, it was. It, people love it. It's hilarious, but it just says that you can do it too. If I can do it, you can do it too. So I just want to encourage you to do that. And as a result, people are out there looking. And today, as a result, someone was looking, and that's Wired Magazine. Wired Magazine is a very big deal, and this afternoon um, they've invited me to be interviewed. So, yay! Uh, how exciting is that? It could have been the Food Network show, Outrageous Pumpkins, which, again, they were hunting on the internet to find me and found me. So, you just never know who's going to find me, find you. And then remember to uh, tell people your dream. So, other than just posting your artwork or your sculptures or your stop motion or whatever, or doing broadcasts like this, post your dream and I will lead from the front. I want my own show. If you're out there and you're looking for someone who's great at, I want your own show. Maybe what we do is I host a art selling show where artists can submit their work and I auction them off to the great outdoors on a TV show. That could be a fun show. I would love that. First of all, I get to see all of your wonderful art. And second, I get to do something super fun and positive and, and open. So uh, just a suggestion. Don't have to go with it. Just I want my own show. Okay. There you go. So that's all you do. You say, here is what I'm doing. I'm good on camera. I talk well. And I am perfect for a show. So how about it? Okay. So ask me anything. Again, thank you to Leo Holzer for putting these questions together. I know that it's a very, very, uh, it can be a tedious job collecting questions. But I've said to him very frankly that if he gets tired, just let me know. Because when I speak in public, a lot of people get shy about asking a question. And so to warm them up, I have a few go-to questions that I come up with. So I'm more than happy to do that for Leo if he needs like a day off. And there's no reason for someone like Leo Holzer to sit through this entire thing. It's like my husband. He sits and watches this entire broadcast. You don't have to because it's recorded and you can come back. The only person who really has to be here is me. And I love it or I wouldn't be doing it. All right? So there you go. Let's get started. Okay. Topical questions. Oh, my goodness. Really? Um, <laughs> sorry. Governor Gavin Newsom said last week he wanted state officials to visit Walt Disney World. That's our fault, you guys. How many times do we all get on here during an AMA or during another broadcast and encourage Gavin Newsom to go see Disneyland? And if you guys did it on your channels and your Facebook pages or your Facebook lives, didn't I say he was watching? So always say your dream. And our dream was Gavin you don't have to open it up, but you do need to let people know what kind of guidelines they need to be working on in order to open up at some time, don't you? Yes, you do. And good for you guys. Gavin's up in Sacramento, and you must understand that Gavin Newsom may not be a Disney file like most of you out there. He needs you to educate him. He needs you to help him to understand the importance of Disneyland. So the first thing we all did, and we've been doing it for a few weeks now, if you remember, is urging him to go to Disneyland. And look, he's going to Disneyland. Pat yourself on the back. Because you did it. Yes. I'm, I'm, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. You did it. 
Okay, so Univer and Universal Studios Orlando for fact-finding mission before reopening. Meanwhile, Disneyland announced it had reached a cast member callback plan with all but the largest union. Do these developments bode well for an eventual opening? Or do you think it all remains up to the up in the air, especially since 24 other states are expecting record-breaking cases and deaths as California also braces for flu season and rest its ugly head? Let me just point out, just writing this question must have exhausted Leo Holzer. So thank you for this question. Um, I think it bodes well for reopening. Okay, but here's the problem. In California, we're in the purple tier. Okay, in two levels. And I watch this like a little hawk because I want you guys to have Disneyland back too. Understand that I want you to have Disneyland back too. But I also understand that being a politician is a thankless job. I'm sorry, you can't please everybody. I don't care who you are. And I like Gavin Newsom, okay? I think he's, stu he's stood up to a lot of pressure and if you don't like him, okay, fine, that's your business. If you need someone to blame, fine, that's your business. I'm with you. Go for it. But I think you also should look in the mirror because uh, if you are a Lakers fan and you found yourself at the Staples Center breaking glass or dancing too close to people without a mask, you are the problem. You are. You see, this is one of the reasons Disneyland is not opening because we are kept in the purple tier by behavior like this, okay? If you're going to protest, please wear a mask and try to social distance six feet. I know it's difficult, but do you realize that the people at the Staples Center, LA Live, the Los Angeles Lakers, and all the other basketball teams, seven days before the Lakers took the title, and I'm not a sports freak, but I know this because my family is and my husband happens to be the son of a sports announcer. He's not much into sports either, but you hear it. You hear it. You hear it, right? So this was a big thing for the Lakers to win this because their colleague Kobe Bryant died in a terrible accident. And they wanted to they wanted to pay, uh, pay tribute to him and they did it in the best way they knew. And this is great. But seven days before the Lakers took that title... Staples Center, LA Live, everyone all over the news said, don't come down here. When you celebrate, celebrate with intelligence. Don't come down here. Did I say don't come down here? And by the way, don't come down here. And please don't come down here. And we've got barriers up seven days early. So you don't come down here. And what did you do? You went down there. So is it any wonder that our doctors here in California and Gavin Newsom who has to deliver the message that we're not opening Disneyland is also feeling terrible. He just wants you to comply. So folks, the sooner you get the mask on and the sooner you social distance, the sooner Disneyland and other parks that you love can be open. All right, we've got to go down. We've got to get out of purple into red and from red into orange. We have to do it. They're not going to budge. They're tigers here, and they don't want people to get sick. And as stated in this question, many states are buckling down because we're starting to see our numbers creep up, and flu season is coming. So let's make a pledge that we are going to think about each other, that we are going to care about each other, and we are going to be like many of you Disney fans are, I know when you guys get into the park, Disney fans, you're going to be you're going to be good about it, because so many of you pointed out how good Walt Disney World is working, how well um, Shanghai and even Hong Kong are working. This is because they know if they do their due diligence, the park stays what open. And I can't speak for Gallon Gavin Newsom, but I'll bet you he doesn't want to do the saloon door thing, because it irritates everybody. We're open, we're closed, we're open, we're closed, we're open, we're closed, we're open, we're closed. Saloon door, you know? He doesn't want to do that. Cut this guy a break. I I would honestly hate to have his job. And he's I think he's doing he's doing well. And I also think so are the doctors and scientists. They're trying so hard. They're trying so hard. 
And when you're a leader and you refuse to wear a mask, what does this say to the country? So now people are like, well, if he's not doing it, why should we? That's his choice, of course, but I think he should wear a mask. You know, I think he should do social distance. Look into science, look at the doctors. So we can all be open. You know, is it really going to hurt? Do something cool, you know. Put something on and it looks cool. So many great artists out there are doing these amazing masks. I'm so impressed. It's not rocket science and it doesn't, it, I don't think it does. It is tough to go, okay, I got to go out. So my purse, my keys, oh, and my mask, you know. It, it's unnatural to step out of your yard. Someone's crossing, a lot of walkers out here where I live. And you look at each other and you go, oh, you know, you just automatically, pardon me, and you jump back. You know, it's some sort of new dance. But look at it with, with, with humor and look at it with spirit and be positive. And, uh, and uh, it will reopen. But Disneyland's a tiny park, as I've said before. And they're going to have they, I know they have a lot of work to do before they can open, but they, they will be able to open. I promise. I think, I mean, we all want it. We're, you know, we're all, we have powerful, powerful prayers and we're a powerful group of people. So they will open and we, we proved it because they're going to Disneyland to check it out. And they weren't before. Seriously. I really believe that. I believe it was you and me and all of us that kept saying it on our, on our social media, on our pages, on our podcasts. We just kept saying, all they're asking is for you to go down. We need guidance, that's all. And they said, okay, we'll go down and guide you. And that's 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 the first step. So yay! Newsom also upset many annual pass holders when he suggested interest to Disneyland and DCA guests be limited geographically. Yeah, ouch, oof. Ugh. Do you have any thoughts about the parks only being open to people who live within 120 miles? Oh, gosh. Isn't that a tough one? Isn't that a tough one? <sighs> nah. No, no, no. I don't think that should happen. Okay. Okay, so here. We're on a public channel. Here we go. I don't think you should do that. I know. I know. I'm all about being protected, but these are Disney fans, okay? I, I am not going to buy into the fact that Disney fans are going to jeopardize that park closing again. I just don't believe that of you guys. I really don't. You guys really understand. You get it. If you're going to take your masks off and do a selfie, uh, I hope that you will then quarantine from the rest of your family if you got to do it. But personally, I would make a pledge to leave your mask on and take a picture because I want to see the cute masks and show that you're, you're following the rules. And when Disneyland opens, show your leadership by social distancing and following the rules. And, and post that, guys. Here I am, following the rules. You know, because it's going to be the opportunity to keep the park open. I've heard that downtown Disney gets a little bit dicey the, the, you know, the later in the day it gets. People walking with food when they shouldn't. And, and listen, there's people, Disney has got these, like, you know, uh, COVID police, if you will, that are saying, remember to social distance, you can't walk with food and eat, understand it's not good, blah, blah, blah. Who wants to be a mom? They're moms at home with their own children. Why do they want to be moms to total strangers? But these people are doing it because they what? Love the park. So I want you to think about this, love the park, and I think anybody can come. Now, personally, I wouldn't be flying. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't want to fly. But if you're comfortable with that, you've taken your precautions, you're washing your hands, you get your hand sanitizer, you tell the guy next to you to stop eating the cookie for two hours and put his mask on, great. If you got a center seat that's empty, and in some planes there's a center seat, that helps a little. But, you know, I think people who are very great distances are going to really think about coming to Disneyland. They may drive. But honestly, um, how far away is Las Vegas? Vegas has to be included. I'm sorry. Vegas has to be included. Arizona needs to be included. You know, Nevada and Arizona got to be included. There, 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 are people, there are people in Las Vegas who, who need that as their... I mean, you know, Disney is a part of your bone and your breathing, like sculpture, like sculptures for me. So, uh, so I, don't, I don't think you should do that. 
you know, I believe the Disney people will be really, really cool. I wouldn't say that about Lakers fans. Sorry. But uh, they proved what they were all about, didn't they? Not all of you. Not all of you. I'm not going to do that to you. Many of you Lakers fans were very, very careful in your celebration. My cousin and my father are two big Lakers fans. They are in the same household. They did the happy dance. You know, high-fiving each other. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. You know, wearing their jerseys, you know. So they did it at home, my father, who apparently looks like the Anderthal man. I haven't seen him since February. Apparently he has an afro out to here and a beard just about as wide. I can't wait. I hope I can get a picture before he shaves. But my point is this. Many of you listened and many of you did just that. I'm speaking to those of you who found your little bodies at the Staples Center after, after seven days. They told you not to go. So... That's dangerous. That's keeping Disneyland closed. Yes, you are keeping Disneyland closed. Whenever you do stuff like this, you're keeping Disneyland closed. So if you got to do it, do it with, with intelligence. Be accountable. Okay? Okay. Good. Um, how long do you typically spend planning and preparing your ballot decisions? Have you loaded yet? No. I told you I would tell you the truth. We're going to we're going to submit our ballots this weekend and um in California I really have to dig deep and study. I really I'm you know, voting is a big deal, okay? You got to vote. But voting is not like ordering a cup of coffee. Okay, I think I you know, I I want you to vote like your life depends on it. Not something that you're squeezing in in your life. I forget who said that, but it was really well said. So forgive me, whoever it was, but I'm requoting you now. And I think that's a really good statement. You want to make time to sit down and learn about the propositions. Vote with intelligence, with knowledge, okay? Because my father always said to me, if, if uh, you're watching television and there's a heavy end of one way for a proposition. So let's say you you only see vote yes on the proposition, but you don't see any vote no's on TV or vice versa. That it's usually, you should usually vote the other way. Now that's not always true, but what that does alert you to doing is dig deep into the proposition and learn about it. Because if it's heavy yes or it's heavy no, that's a red flag, boop, 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 which means you should study the propositions. You should always study the propositions. Here in California, because people did not study the propositions, we have a hell of a gas tax. We do. It's awful. Because people listened to the hype and didn't read the proposition, even though many tried to get on camera, get on radio and say, that's not what the proposition is. If you don't believe me, go here and read it. People just didn't have the time. And as a result, we got a monster gas tax now. Okay. And the people that were supposed to benefit are not being benefited. Okay. That is criminal, I think, to tell you the proposition means one thing and underneath it means another. I think that's dirty pool. What do you think? Okay. So. I'm someone who really wants to know about the propositions, but I need it to be stated in a way that I understand it, okay? And when you open that book, I don't know about you, but it sounds like they really try to make you confused when you try to read about the propositions in that book they send you. It's like, what are you saying to me? Do you think I'm a lawyer? You know, because I'm not. I'm an artist. I don't want to, like, oh, my head. So there is a man named Chris N. Carlo. He it can be heard on KFI News Radio. And if you don't agree with every person who is on KFI News Radio, neither do I. But I love KFI as a station. And Chris N. Carlo has created a podcast called Propositioned. So, Propositioned. And go to that podcast and he takes every single proposition California has on the ballot and he unbiasedly presents both cases in a way that you can understand. I can understand. The layman can understand. 
So my husband and I have gotten up, I think, to Proposition 18, and we still have a few to go. So we are curling up on our Sunday, and I'll make a lovely brunch. That's our family day, and we're going to finish listening to the propositions and get our, get our ballot in the mail. Because we want to know each and every one. And what's interesting is, after you listen to proposition, you may sway a different way than the television is telling you to do. I'm not saying that you will, and I'm not saying that I will. But what I am saying is it's very interesting. And Chris and Carlo, what he does is he brings on experts from the yes on proposition 15, for example. And he brings people from the no on Proposition 15, for example. And then he does even more. He puts a, a group of young people who are studying law and people who are studying government, young people from colleges and stuff. It's really amazing, guys. It's really amazing. And they weigh in. And the younger are our future. So I love Propositioned. I keep meaning to shoot a, a, a quick shout out to uh, Chris and Carlo and telling him thank you because it's made my life so much easier to tune him in and to learn about the propositions with an unbiased opinion. So if you've not voted yet and you live in California and you're like me, you're like, I really do want to vote with, 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 I don't, I want, I don't want to just pick it because I'm following the commercials. I want to really know that this is in my heart when I want to vote. Uh, check out propositioned it's um it's a great podcast you can get it on itunes and you can get it for free on iHeartRadio. so uh so check it out i don't know if there's anything like that for the other states but you could check you know i just am so grateful that being in california i've got someone like chris who can make it easy for my husband and myself to be clear we were both very surprised at some of the things we've learned on these propositions we might have been wanting to go one way and we went another way, but we were pleasantly, I mean, it was just eye-opening. And that's what we want, is we want enlightenment and knowledge. If you're one of those people, Leo Holzer, who really can understand that stuff, yeah, no problem. But I'm not, so I'm really grateful for that. So there you go. I know I talked a while on that, but, the, it, you know, voting is so important that, uh, that this, is a great, this is a great question. So how long do I typically spend uh, breaking down the uh, the ballot, et cetera, et cetera, uh, that I have to vote on? Yeah, it's been, what's it been about? This is going to be week two. Yeah, because we squeeze in a proposition whenever we can. And um, sometimes, and we got to be together because I won't listen without my husband. We have to be together. So <laughs> it's taking some time not listening to the proposition. <laughs> Because he's he's got a midget schedule and so do I and I want us to sit together and listen. It's just easier for him if I pull it up and we listen together, you know. You know, um, earlier today I was talking about true love and I'm happy to say I have it. And uh, it's very rare. It's very, very rare. So if you have it, congratulations. And if you don't and you're still single, trust me, it's worth waiting for. And one of the things you realize is about your partner or your spouse is there's things they do that really work for them and there are things that they don't do. So you toward a, it, you know, true love, you fill in the blank, that yin and yang, and uh, it works. And one of the things that really helps my husband is we both sit down and make a plan to listen to Chris and Carlo's proposition. What type of feedback are you getting on your hitchhiking ghosts and how early, how, how are early sales going? Well, I'm just launched it about, uh, what, 30, 15 minutes ago. This is the official launch. Push. Okay, but uh, 70 are spoken for out of 100 limited editions. So I would say that's a win. Now we will gauge how many follow through. But usually with y'all, when you want something, especially these ghosts, which are absolutely super califragilistic, expialidocious, you get them. Okay. So again, what I've done is they are $999 if you buy it in one fell swoop and that is discounted. So for $999, you get a discount. And then um, they really should have cost about $1,500, but I couldn't do that. I just, I just couldn't. So if you buy the whole set, you get a savings. And if you do a payment plan, you hit closer to the mark of what they should have cost. All right, full disclosure. You will be paying shipping and you will be paying, uh, you will be paying shipping and you will be paying tax if you live in California 
or you can arrange with me to pick it up. We'll talk about that. I have uh, a couple of people that uh, are in my bubble that belong to clubs that are picking up for their clubs. So they're pit like I have one group that's ordered maybe 20 and they're picking them up for the group. So so you can make it work if you want to go past shipping. The reason shipping is for, uh, 13 something and change is because I want to send them priority. I want to make sure they get to you fast and they get to you safely. Okay. One thing I did not talk about is the lighting inside. We will guarantee the lighting inside for six months. Uh, meaning that if something goes wrong, we will pay for it in a six month period. And as long as it's not dropped, broken or whatever. But if you do drop, break or damage your ghosts, don't be embarrassed. Don't be sad. Just know you'll have to pay for them, but send them to me because when we repair them, they will be repaired as if they were never broken. Now understand that these should, should be, these are pretty durable. Uh, so, uh, there are some things I'll tell you depending on how they're broken, but I'm saying you're not going to break them. You guys are going to be great. Okay. I'm boxing them well in an amazing box. I am then putting it priority mail. This is why because I want you to get it. When you're investing like you're investing, I want it to be special for you. And uh, and so they are. So watch that video. It really is entertaining and it really does show how beautiful they are. They are amazing and beautiful. And one thing I can do for you right now is um, I really have a favorite. I, I, I really like Gus. But then I like Professor Phineas and Ezra too, but I really like Gus. So this is how big uh, little Gus is. And you see the base here. See the base? Okay, so it's it's this base allows us, and again the video will tell you about it, allows us to do AAA batteries in the bottom. And I'm going to send you those AAA batteries and they're not going to be crap batteries. They're going to be Duracell professional batteries. Again, why the price is the price. Because I don't want you to have some cheesy battery. I want you to have a good battery. And they will last a long time. So you can pull them out very delicately. Hold them by the base. Be careful when you turn them over. Put something soft below. And then you can do all of this to change the batteries. But the batteries are supposed to last a good long time. I got they're really long lasting batteries. And if I go to camera two here, you can see how cute he is. Those of you who didn't get to see him, isn't he cute? And then on the back, so even at night, you can see it is a little yellow switch to turn him on. So there he is. Isn't he just so fun? He really is a little specter. Isn't that cute? So those of you. There's a little preview for you how adorable he is. He really is lovely. He really is super lovely. With the lights on, you can see. He really is illuminating, maybe. And what's nice is he's a ghost. So some areas are soft, some areas are hot. Just, it, he's just wonderful. You know, I don't have anything but good things to say about him. Uh, we decided to do this bright little switch so that if you want to, you know, set the mood and you're looking for it, it's not black on black. Originally, I thought black on black and I thought, meh. Let's do something bright and fun in the back so that you can find it. But there he is. There's our little our little Ezra demonstrating and everything. So a lot of work. They're built by hand, each and every one. And, uh, and they're in a very cool box. So watch that video and you'll know all that you need to know. Okay. Uh, so the feedback is good. Most of you are doing what I appreciate, which is buying the entire set. Because that really is the thank you to you for hanging in there. If you know, you're crunching numbers and you're affording that set, you know, so good for you. You're, you're making it work and I appreciate it because, uh, uh, this is the problem when I do a estimate, I'm always wrong and I don't like to do that. But, uh, again, um, they are seriously beautiful. So, so, um, there are 30 left. Go to my store to put your order in. And remember, if you've reserved a number, it's your number. Until you say, I'm so sorry, I've decided to opt out of purchasing them right now. Okay? Okay. 
Uh, <clears throat> what are some of your personal favorite outrageous pumpkins? Have you attended various Halloween events in the past at Universal Studios, Not Scary Farm, and Disneyland? What did you like about each of them? Um, outrageous pumpkin, you know, honestly, someone sent me the other day the latest Ray Villafanes. I always like Ray because Ray is about pumpkins. He eats, drinks, lives, breathes pumpkins, and then he makes these cool little scarecrows. And his, he lives in Arizona, and he, you know, just kind of, you know, uh, smokes weed. <laughs> has pumpkins <laughs> makes his pumpkins and does his uh and does his scarecrows and that's his life you know and uh this is his dream you know i don't know about the weed part but he does he, he made it he made it very clear this is what he likes so yay for him you know i'm i don't partake but then you know yay for him if this is what he likes so he likes that and he builds these amazing pumpkins you've seen Ray Villafane. If you haven't, uh, Google Villafane Studios and you're going to see some of the most innovative. He never stops experimenting. And I like to look at his pumpkins. He, his are some, and his, his, his are one of my favorite, okay? But there's another wonderful guy, Mark, who does uh, Maniac Pumpkins. If you go on Instagram and you type in Maniac Pumpkins, you're going to see some gorgeous pumpkins he does. He does not only the Ray Villafane type pumpkins, but he does these sort of jack-o'-lanterns that you scratch the surface and create all these different variations by just sort of etching. My friend Doug Marsh does that too. He's really, really good at it. And so this year, I think I'm going to experiment. I'm going to take a look at Maniac Pumpkins and I'm going to attempt that. I've never done one like that. And so if I'm going to do something new in pumpkins, I think I'm going to follow him. And I do follow him, by the way. And, uh, and, uh, check him out his stuff is uh gorgeous um i could actually take a moment here on my phone which can be very annoying when someone has got their phone in front of them while they're on camera but uh forgive me for a second because if i go to my instagram i'm sure he will have something amazing to show because he always does and then the other one is my um De, de, uh, it's uh, Mark Maniac is Maniac Pumpkins, okay? And de, Dever Customs is another one who does some great stuff. So uh, Maniac Pumpkins and Mark, he does things like time lapse. He does things, you, you just get a great opportunity to see what he's up to. And uh, rather than flip through here, let me just tap on him. And go, oh, it's saying that I can send a message. It's so funny. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to show you Mark's stuff. Oops. I just have to change my source. Yes, my source. I'm just waiting to see my source pop up. There it is. Okay. So, this is the etching style of my friend Mark. He was judging with me on last year's. Last year you saw a one day challenge he was a judge to. And these are some of the things he does. But you see this little etching style where he's not necessarily um, carving. But look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Let's see if I can get him. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? And that's doing this etching style. He's not doing the three-dimensional style that I like, but here he is doing the three-dimensional style. So Mark is really talented, and I, and I love to look at other pumpkin carvers and see what they're doing. And I encourage you to do the same thing. This is not a competitive form of art. It's We share with each other. I can write to Mark. I wrote to Mark because I was thinking of doing a mural in my home. Isn't that great? I was thinking, and see how he does the little thing in the eyeball it's really cool look at that tiger Ooh, again the etching style in fact i was thinking maybe i'd do a tiger because i love i love big cats so that might be a nice thing for me to try he did this because probably somebody ordered it and then there's another fast one so there you go so that answers that question about pumpkins i do i follow my fellow pumpkins i'm also following 
the um, I'm following the uh, contestants from Outrageous Pumpkins because I love them. I loved every single one of them, and I didn't really get to know them because I sequestered myself away during the judging contest so I could judge their work, not fall in love with them. And you know how I am with people. I love them. So I made sure that I, you know, isolated myself. Okay. I'm going to plug this in again because uh, a funny thing happened when I was looking for the questions from Leo today. And I'm going to digress a little bit here. Uh, uh, a very nice fella sent me, let me go to photos. Carl, I believe his first name was. And he sent me this picture. This is hilarious, guys. Are you ready? Blast from the past. Star Wars. You like Star Wars. You're a cosplayer. You build everything you build in Star Wars. Okay, here is me. 1980. Are you ready? Blast from the past. Here we go. There it is, gang. Look at that horrible wallpaper. Look at that sassy girl. Uh, this is me in 1980. This is my new Hope outfit I built. After looking and watching Mark Hamill on um, on Dagobah being trained by Yoda. And unfortunately here I don't have my Yoda. And uh, I believe right by my hand is my lightsaber. And next to that is my blaster. So uh, I did do cosplay. I did do costume play. And uh, this is me in the outfit. I made the boots. Made everything. Did all the leather work. The jacket. The hat. The shirt. The boots. All of it I made by hand. Just like y'all do when you're cosplaying, only this is 1980, before many of you were born. And uh, I thought you might like to see that. Star Wars to the end um, really dove into it. And then I had my, my puppet Yoda that I sculpted. And uh, I sculpted my Yoda out of a mattress. Yeah, I made him out of a, uh, let me go to albums because I think it'll be easier to find Yoda. But um, I took a, a, a couch cushion and some scissors and I carved Yoda's face out of a couch cushion and some scissors and I made him into a puppet and uh, here he is. So here you go. Here it is. So there I am with Yoda. And Yoda is, uh, let me tell you a little bit about Yoda. Those of you who love to do cosplay and puppets. Um... um Yo, so here I am, again, sassy chick again, doing my sassy thing. And this is Yoda, and we're posing for a picture, obviously. Uh, Yoda's eyes are hand-painted ping-pong balls. If he opens his mouth, he's got those cute little teeth that Yoda has. I made those out of wax. Um, hard wax, but made, sculpted them out of wax. So he had little wax teeth, his little fingernails. I made his little pipes around his waist. I made the whole puppet, but the, hand, the, uh, the face is hand-carved from using a pair of scissors scissors yes fisker's scissors okay so the scissors look like this and if we go to the main one this is what i made it out of yeah i carved a couch cushion into yoda using these kind of scissors sharper than these but these were the ones the fiskers so there you go isn't that something yeah it's kind of crazy isn't it yeah, back to this. Uh, so, what does that tell you? Uh, if you got a dream and you got something you want to do, he's got a cane. What I did here is uh, the hand that has the cane became one of the rods that uh, perform Yoda's hands, move his hands. And uh, he was a huge success. Many people who saw my performance in 1980 still talk about this me and this character, which is just so sweet of them, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay, great. All right, so I thought I'd show you that. Because now you see the Yoda, and uh, I haven't. I've made quite a few puppets, but a lot of times they're commissioned, so I don't have a lot in house. I make them, I make them uh, uh, for others. You know, people hire me to make their favorite little character as a puppet, or I teach classes to children called Build a Buddy, and uh, that allows kids to have a buddy to talk to. So I used to be in front of 400, 600, 800 kids, and they're. Um, their counselors and stuff. Their, uh, their what do they call them in a camp? Camp counselor? I think it's a camp counselor. Anyway, we did these great classes. Um, so I want to put together a program that does that so that teachers can order the program and do it themselves. 
um, as they try. But this is a great thing to do with your kids if they're frustrated they can't go back to school is let's build a buddy. And then they can, you know, there are times in your life where things get you down so much that you need to lock yourself in the closet and scream. Well, a little child might want to do the same thing. You know, they bring their buddy and they tell their buddy what's really ticking them off. You know, um, I really hate the fact that I can't go to school. I know it sucks, doesn't it? Yes, it really does. It really does. <laughs> you know, so this is what I teach kids, teach them how to do voices, teach them how to do different things um, with their puppet character. They make it out of a sock. And that's what I did. So I'm working now on a, not only a, uh, maybe a Zoom class for kids, but also a package that the people can buy. And it comes and it teaches you all about how to create the Build-A-Buddy program for kids in your neighborhood or your schools or whatever. So that's a goal. That's a dream, too. That's another dream. You know, it's, you know, maybe it's a puppet building show that you put me on. And I build something cool and fun and creative for people and show them how to do voices and stuff. I'm just saying I need my own show. Okay. Uh, so those are my favorite outrageous pumpkins. If you want to know what my favorite outrageous, outrageous, speak Terry, speak Ubu. Um, if you want to know some of my favorite outrageous pumpkins... Uh, back to my phone, because I, I did this thing in my photo album that I really am proud of called Favorites. You know, everybody get when I figure out something in technology, I just, you know, pop a cork and really celebrate, because <laughs> this is not how I roll. So I'm very proud of myself. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm taking the, the, the joy in it. Um, but uh, I will, uh, I'll digress a little bit and uh, show you uh, our wedding picture. This is one of my favorite wedding pictures. And there's my rock, love of my life. It took me 15 years to get this fella. So every day I pray to God, don't let me stop doing what I did to get him. Because it's a miracle that we're together. And I never, ever forget that. Okay, next. Oh, my dad. There's my dad. There's my father. This is uh, in the 70s when he he uh, did records. He he uh, he worked at KMPC Radio, and the DJs would talk, and he would spin the records. <clears throat> Look at that afro. Isn't it cool? Yeah. Apparently, he's got it again, but it's not quite so nice. Uh, but anyway, let's get to what I was going to talk about, which is if you want to see pumpkins that I've done that are really special... Uh, and then it's me again. So let me show you my students. Okay, this guy. Look at this amazing pumpkin. Okay, this is Cameron. And uh, Cameron is just, uh, is Cameron Marsh. He is just a brilliant. Cameron has been my student since age nine. And here he's what, like 20-something years old. He's been with me every year. Never misses. And he does these tiki pumpkins. And they just fly. I mean, people want him to carve for them it just it, they have that rough raw tiki style that y'all like so that's him and then um let's go back here are some of my other students so below in the corner is uh you know he's a fun lion isn't he great so the carver's there on the right and then there next to her is the pumpkin unlit and then lit now, people like Ray Villafane a lot of times don't necessarily light their pumpkins from the inside. They're more um, interested in getting the dimensional detail when they are carving that style of pumpkin, okay? But I really love to teach people how to do this kind of pumpkin. So I'm not saying what he's doing is wrong, it's just we're different. <clears throat> I'm kind of a mix between Ray Villafane and Mark because... Mark does those beautiful stained glass, like the stained glass looking jack-o'-lanterns like the tiger. And then he does the dimensional ones. And I'm kind of in between. And dimensional lit pumpkin. That's kind of my jam. So this is what I taught. Now understand, this is her first pumpkin. So if you're scared that you think when you do a class you're going to embarrass yourself, not on my watch, okay? Here's another lady. And it makes you feel really good. Now hers was a monster. You know, she just took the shape of the pumpkin she's leaning on, and then she followed the pumpkin and created this creature. They're just beautiful. They're just, 
They're brilliant. They're brilliant. They're brilliant. They're brilliant. Okay, what else have I got here? Okay, some of mine. Okay, so some of them are weird. <laughs> I love weird. You know that, right? You know I love weird. You know I love weird. So I love weird. And here is my weird one. So this is my fence. And a lot of people were walking by when you could trick or treat in person. And so this is my pumpkin to make people know they have to go up the walkway to get their treat. Forget the fact we're playing a movie on the picture window and there's pumpkins all over the yard, but it doesn't matter. A gate really is a good barrier. Just remember that. So there's my weird one. And then this is my Beauty and the Beast. So you can see Belle right there and below her chin is the book she's holding. And then behind her is Beast. Yeah, I should have probably had an external light, but I really like the way this looked, so I didn't. But um, this is one again that you see. I'm all I am about the lit dimensional pumpkin. Okay, I occasionally do the other kind, but my jam, my love, is this, and that's what your question was about. Oh, look, it's Rocket. Why do I have this? Because I was going to make this costume for my dog. Because uh, my dog looks just like Rocket. Uh, I do a lot of charity work. This is Tippy Hedron, although Tippy Hedron is dressed as a kitty cat right here. But this is for her foundation, Roar. She uh, has a foundation, and um, I'm not sure still we still have her or not. But anyway, um, she's lovely, and for I, I sculpted this pumpkin live, and then she auctioned it off for her charity that protects big cats that people adopt and then when it becomes a big cat they don't know what to do with like it with it like the um um wildlife way station does the same but anyway unfortunately wildlife way station had to shut down which is a heartbreaker but there she is posing with it and i did a roaring tiger this is very early and i'm going to thank right up front steve schultz because he's a good friend of mine he's the one that put me in touch with this charity so i was more than happy to do it oh that's us again being happy um, I'm digressing again. Okay, here is my Maleficent, and here she is lit. So, eh, you know, some turn out better than others, but yeah, there she is lit. And then as we go up here, here is my dragon's egg. This is one of my favorite because I love dragons. So here's my dragon. Now look at the shape of the pumpkin, and then, you know, check out the shape of the pumpkin. And so this is what you do is you find a wacky shaped pumpkin and it kind of speaks to you as to what it should look like. Okay. So I thought this looked like an egg to me. So I put this dragon in kind of a nice little fetal position. Look at him lit. So I'm teaching these classes. You go to my store, you type in the search box in my store, you put pumpkin classes. There's a video you can purchase. And there's a video tool set combination just for the classes. Or you can join me via Zoom, and I'll be sending the Zoom link out uh, next week. But you can join me via Zoom and learn to carve like this, or simply watch me teach others to learn to carve like this. But standing on the sidelines is a lot more boring than participating. It's $20 to join the class. I hope you will consider it, because you can sculpt just like this. Um... Well, not exactly like that because I'm me and you're you. Here's a pumpkin that's a 650 pounder. This one does not light. So this is when I did the same style along the lines of Ray Villafane. And then you saw Mark. He did some of those as well. And uh, this one is huge. And it has, um, it has a dragon. Of course it does. It has a skull. And then the dragon is wrapped around the skull very happily cuddling it. And then the other thing I like to do is keep the pumpkin shell, like push it through, break through. So I keep the shell. I don't carve the whole thing so that you lose what it looks like. I'll show you one that I lose what it looks like, and I don't like it as well. I like to keep that pumpkin, you know, gourd look. That's just me again, you know. Okay, here's one of my husband's. This is my husband's favorite. This pumpkin right here that you see is about this big. She's only, she's a classic size. She's like a classic pumpkin. Once you understand the, get, as a beginner, I'm going to have you get a wolf pumpkin. And the wolves have these giant stems. And uh, she's not a wolf. She's a classic jack-o'-lantern. But uh, 
but they have these giant stems and that means the flesh is usually pretty good. So this is a classic regular pumpkin, but because of my ability, I'm able to use a very narrow wall to create it. And lit, she's just stunning, isn't she? Now notice in the tear ducts that's very hot and around one side it's very hot, that's because I punched through. But I don't worry about that because she's still beautiful. So don't freak out if you punch through a little bit and pretty soon as you go along, you'll learn where you wanna punch through for real. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna work that out, and I'm gonna teach you how to do that. Okay, so there they are, um, my my loving little little pumpkin stuff. I'm just gonna make sure I got them all. I did. So there you go. Those are my personal favorite sculpted pumpkins. I also did some like Mark and Ray. I've also been hired to do some for people. Ellen hired me to sculpt a pumpkin and, uh, and, uh, for the Ellen show a few years back, I did a true blood when it was running for their party, a vampire biting the neck of a young lady. And then I also did a desperate, a desperate housewives apple. I've done Sweeney Todd where Sweeney has his knife against the throat of Mrs. Lovitz and things like that. So I've done a lot of crazy things. Um, and so have my students, they've done great work, but again, if you get the video now, if you just want the video, it's $20 on my, my store site, but, uh, if you want it with the tools, it's, it, I have a special and, uh, you can just do the video and learn from the video and not take my class. <laughs> There's all kinds of ways you can learn about the pumpkins in there. I show all my students. You're going to see, uh, you're going to see Cameron in a very young age. Cause I did this video a little while back. And I also talk about putting a candle in the pumpkin. These giant pumpkins, you don't even need to do that anymore. You can put a camping lantern and then you don't have a fire hazard and it's much brighter. So, so uh, you can do these, th these camping lights and these little push lights that they've got now are so bright, there's no reason to do a candle, okay? And, uh, and I should have shown you with my lady, uh, people wanna know, like, like you can do it with many, um, pumpkin sculptors won't open the pumpkin but when you're a beginner I say open the pumpkin just open it at the bottom so you remember my lady I opened her at the bottom and when you set it down people believe the pumpkin isn't open so why stress yourself when you open the bottom you can touch the wall and know how thick the wall is and know how deep you got to go these professionals they've done it so long they can kind of feel it but you're coming right out of the gate as a beginner if you want to try that creates a lot of anxiety and i'm not about anxiety i don't want you to be scared when you're sculpting your pumpkin you're going to be scared enough if you're starting out aren't you you're going to be nervous don't be nervous pumpkins rot and uh if you don't like your design you may later because it gets this little black uh uh bacteria on it this little fungus that will give it a beard if you do a face. It gets a beard and then it starts to go into it. And it starts to look really cool. So you'll love it, you know. And really, when you're carving it without the light, realize that that you're going to fall in love with it. Now, what Mark says, and it's very true, Mark Maniac, and do follow him on Instagram. He's very, very talented. Um, as is Ray Bellamy, but then that goes without saying. You've seen Ray's stuff. It's amazing. Um, he is the pumpkin king. But... Uh, uh, Mark says that he puts a light inside the pumpkin that he's doing that la that lace like that tiger. And that way he can kind of carve towards the light. You got to do this, in my opinion, in increments because you can become uh, snow blind by looking at the light too long. So take breaks. But that's how you can kind of get the edge when you're doing it for your first pumpkin and, and cut yourself a break. And, uh, and yeah, I've been featured in magazines. Bark. There used to be a, a magazine for dogs called Bark Magazine. And the photographer came out here and shot a lot of my pumpkins and me with my dog. And then uh, several people sent me uh, their pumpkins uh, that they had done from that article. So cross the board. And today Wired is going to talk about that and other stuff, I'm sure. But again, I need my own show. Okay. Uh, and then have you attended various Halloween events? Universal Studios. I did Universal Studios and got so scared. I don't like booze. I don't like that. I like more suspense. You know, we talked about this before where I like it to just be. He's coming. He's coming. Tippy, don't go upstairs. 
I like that sort of stuff, where my heart starts to beat and stuff. I don't like those <laughs> booze like that. <laughs> you know, it's not, not my thing. It's just something I, I, maybe I liked it when I was a kid, but I don't like it much anymore. Um, but yeah, I did Universal's, uh, Universal's, it's very good. Not, not Scary Parm was pretty neat because you were on a train going through scary stuff. And uh, uh, Cassandra Peterson's children went to the same school that my stepson Ian did. So a lot of times she would recommend that we go there and, and maybe float me a ticket or two. She's a lovely lady. Elvira's awesome, as you know. So uh, I would go and see her show. You know, I mean, it's all about Elvira, isn't it? So I would go do that. So that's what I liked about that. Um, yeah, that's what I liked. Disneyland! I did not do their Halloween. Um, when I was excited about Disneyland back in the day, they weren't doing Halloween. But what they just started to do, and you asked me about this, and I think I was asked on a podcast, and then I digressed. So I'll answer that question here. I am not much for painted pumpkins. I just don't see the appeal. Let me say that. And a lot of the people that were carving the ones at Disney would carve shallow and then they would paint them and then they would coat them. They were very pretty, but to me, they didn't look like pumpkins. And so I liked them, but it wasn't a style I wanted to do. I just, in fact, uh, Joseph Yakovetic uh, actually, and he is a pumpkin sculptor that was at Club 33 doing demos when he lived here in L.A., and uh, in California and uh, he did demos at Disneyland and um, and then he moved to Florida so but when he was doing those demos he said you know how do you know if you haven't tried it and uh, let me see if I can find my pumpkin that I painted I did it one time and you know at the time that painted pumpkin was really a good idea because it um it 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 lost what am i trying to say here it lost its detail just being flat orange you know so um i don't have it in favorites because i'm silly i should have done that uh, i'd like to just see if i can find it because i'd love to show it to you you know, it's good if you're prepared before this, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm very authentic. This is me. All 100% supercalifragilistic. Everything about me is here. Um, many of you know this young lady. I'm going to show you her in a minute. There we go. And then let me see if I can find my pumpkin that I'm talking about here. Do y'all have too many photos in your phone? <laughs> I have too many photos in my phone. And my husband says if I don't shape up, I could be very sad if I don't get my act together. So I am going to get my act together uh, as far as that. But you can only do is what you can do. And I really want to make sure these broadcasts are good for you. So um, that's why I do what I can. And this time is launching the ghost because you've waited two years. Many of you have waited a whole two years for these ghosts. And so I want to make sure you get these ghosts because it's it's not fair. It's not fair to to keep you from having ghosts because you waited a long time. And they're beautiful, aren't they? Oh, my gosh, they're so beautiful. I'm so proud of them. Um, but, yeah, I just think you deserve to have to have them. And so I put everything aside and did it and understand during COVID – it, it gets a little more, you get you get overwhelmed easier, I think, don't you? Yeah, I think so. So anyway, I'm still hunting it. In the vast depths of the photos of the world. Where is it? Join Terry as she tries to find where the photo of her pumpkin that Joseph Yakovetic challenged her with is inside. Will she find it? I'm going slow because I think I may be in the, the area finally. One of my favorite things is to put a ton of pumpkins in my Mustang and drive around, drive home with it full of these amazing pumpkins inside my Mustang with the top down. 
People go, look at all those big pumpkins she has in her back seat. Follow me to pumpkin class is what I used to say. Uh, unfortunately, now we can't do that. So I would love to do. I don't know how virtual classes are going to work. Full disclosure, guys, because I'm really a hands-on. My students will tell you that they will. They try very hard to. I try very hard to help them if they're trying to um, figure out. I cannot believe I did not make that a favorite. It's just like you go here. Ah ha ha! I found them. Okay, so let me make them favorites and then I will. There we go. Alrighty. Excellent. Everything is open. Everything is open. Okay. I'm so glad you're patient. Those of you who have stayed with me, thank you for being so patient. Um, and wanting to see more pumpkins. More pumpkins for you. Okay, here we go. Uh, here they are. So, so here's another amazing student, um, that I'm going to show you. Um, you know, this lovely lady, she's always wearing cute mouse ears and a cute dress and traveling all over everywhere. And, uh, she hasn't been able to travel all over everywhere, but she made a, the, uh, she made time to come down to my pumpkin class when it was live and sculpt. And this is her first pumpkin. Isn't it cute? I always encourage people to do teeth because teeth are so rewarding and fun. And you remember if you watched out the outrageous pumpkins that you heard, uh, um, you heard, uh, I'm so sorry. There goes one of those brain things again, but I'll remember it in a minute. But he was saying he was a dental hygienist with the teeth in his final pumpkin. Yeah, they can be that way. You can be a dental, you can be a dental person with that if you, if you so inclined. Okay, so let's get to the one I told you that I finally painted. Here it is. So here he is. I sculpted this demon pumpkin. This is the shape of the pumpkin. And he has a beautiful stem. This is not a wolf. I'm not sure what it, this one is. I think it's a classic market pumpkin, but it just grew really weird. And the nice thing about a farm is that when you're on a farm, you get to have a great variety of pumpkins, ghost pumpkins, which are white. Some ghost pumpkins have white flesh, meaning the stuff inside, or peach, and both are lovely to carve. But here it is painted. So Joseph challenged me to paint a pumpkin. So here I painted this pumpkin, and I actually think he looks better. Doesn't he have a beautiful stem? Yeah, that stem is gorgeous. So, so if you look here, you kind of lose the detail in the, uh, the face, right? But then you paint it, so, you know, hats off to Joseph Yakovetic for having me do that because it looks beautiful. And I didn't put a light in this one. I just had him out front to, you know, and to show my students what can be achieved with painting your pumpkins. And I just used food coloring and dyed the, dyed the uh, pumpkin flesh. So, um, so, and since I'm in here again, oh, and I wanted to show you this one. Joseph, again, challenged me to do a stacked pumpkin. I usually just sculpt the pumpkin and sculpt the pumpkin. But here he had me do a stacked pumpkin and this is the Cheshire Cat uh, with his little tail. The tail is made out of a squash. Um, and uh, there he is, there's the Cheshire Cat. And I used toothpicks for the whiskers. So I love when artists, you know, kind of give you a fun, fun, exciting challenge. So if I go back up to my lady, I'm trying to see if you, yes, you can. Okay, so here's my lady. At the top, it looks like she's not open, but underneath, she's open underneath. And if you look at the light, can you see? Well, barely you can see. Yeah, you can see it. See the light underneath her chin? That's the hole. So you, all you have to do as a beginner, rather than tap the pumpkin like some sort of cantaloupe or something, and understand that most of the pumpkin carvers, Mark and Ray, they just carve. And sometimes Ray will open them up. But what I'm saying is, as a beginner, I highly recommend you open it up. But if you want it to look like it's not open, open the bottom like this. Open the bottom. People will actually walk up and ask you how you carved it without opening it. And then you go, oh, let me show you my secret. And then you tip it back and they go, whoa, it's a great, uh, it's a great, 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 um, dazzler if you get to talk to people, but you may not this time, but in any case, that's, that's what it is. So I know I've spent a little time on the pumpkin thing, but it is Halloween and you might want to come and join my class or you might want to 
buy the DVD or you might want to just Google some of the people like Ray Villafane, myself and Mark and then Devin, Devin Creations. Just, just Google pumpkin carvers. There's so many talented people. There was a guy out there, I think he called his pumpkins monster pumpkins and then there was bumpkins. There, there's tons, just Google them. There, there's tons of really talented pumpkin sculptors out there. And Ray's latest ones have been really fun because he's used pumpkin seeds for teeth or he's he's carved like a um, jicama, I'm, I'm thinking it might be. I could be wrong, it could be a radish. Uh, it could be a, 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 whatever that bulby thing is that looks kind of like a beet but it's not. Uh, he could be carving that. And then he inserts them. He just like puts little incisors. So now he has an orange pumpkin with white, scary teeth, you know. And then sometimes he'll put like real eyeballs and light them up. Uh, the arms you see people, many people use. Those are Ray's special arms. You can go on his website and buy those arms and stick them in your pumpkin so they go rah. They used a few of them on um, Outrageous Pumpkins. Those are Ray's actual creation. So you get the opportunity, excuse me, to really... Uh, grab and um, I'm just switching back over to my iPad. There we go. Um, in case I want to show you something else. Uh, but anyway, they uh, it's fun. You can use sticks like I use the little whiskers for, you know, you can use found object, other plants. You remember that uh, uh, the, the hair rollers, which were a uh, zucchini. It's just, that stuff is brilliant. Fun, brilliant, exciting. So uh, play, play. Even if you don't watch me uh, do my thing, play. Go play. Go have fun and play. Yes. Okay. What else we got here? What else we got? Our time, 1030. We've been on for an hour and 16 minutes. Are you tired yet? <laughs> my husband says I could talk into the darkness. Uh, and we won't see that today, but uh, yeah, I guess I could. Yeah. Okay. All right, what do you th what did you think of the Supreme Court nominee hearings? I thought they should have waited. I really did. I thought that they should have waited. I mean, you know, yeah, I think they should have waited. All right, there you go. Do you think uh, Barrett's confirmation is a done deal with Republicans? Yeah, I kind of do. They they are the majority, and I think they are hell bent on getting this woman in there. So that's kind of what I'm feeling. I could be wrong. Who's listening to me? Um, um, you know, and how should Democrats react? I think you should react with dignity. And I think you should react. I don't think you should throw mud. I know sometimes you can get wrapped up in the magma, you know, but don't you guys want a candidate that if they're being bullied, they go, hey, man, I'm not going to buy into your magma. I'm going to be here and I'm going to tell you my plan. Okay, here's my plan for you, the people, my greatest interest, okay? There's an amazing mayor of Richmond. His name is Dave Snow. He's a lovely man. I taught him when he was a DJ, how to sculpt pumpkins. And he attributes uh, his drive, which he thought was buried, to me igniting it. It doesn't mean that it's me that got him there. No, no, no. Dave Smith got him to where he is, I mean Dave Smith. Dave Snow, Dave Smith too, but David's, but Dave Snow got him to where he um, he is today, and Dave, as uh, in his second term as mayor of Richmond, Indiana, and he talked about how he focuses on the issues and what he's going to do to make his community better. He doesn't buy into the name calling. He doesn't buy into the magma. He simply stays laser focused and leads from the front. I'd like to see more of that. I really would. I don't like the name calling. I never have. I don't think it makes me like the candidates, the other candidate any less or the candidate doing it anymore. So for me, I just always pray one day that they'll talk about the issues and why we should vote for them instead of spending most of their time browbeating the opposite, the opposition, okay? So as far as this question, I really thought they should wait. It's a lot to undertake. I told you, being a government official is not the job that I would want to do. I think it's a thankless job. And then you're piling on stuff for them to do when really they should be thinking about 
this, 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 how are we going to help our, our communities suffering because of COVID-19? Okay. It's already annoying that there's an election during COVID-19 because you want all their attention on the pandemic at hand. Don't you? I mean, I do. Okay. I just kind of would have loved the election to be next year, but you know, or last year, just at a time when you weren't so distracted. But I am very, very proud of all of you guys out there because you're voting like, like crazy. Oh, I'm so proud of you for voting. So many people are voting. And I want to say, keep it up, 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 keep it up. All you vote because it's your right. People died so you could vote. So, uh, so please go vote. Oh my gosh, how exciting to be able to exercise your right to vote. And some of the social media people, the people who have come up and did social media, so you'll vote. Uh, I just am so thankful to all of you for doing that. Um, Chrissy, she she did this beautiful, sexy video, and it is about voting. <laughs> I thought, go, girl. When you got it, flaunt it. <laughs> vote. Does it work? Yeah, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Still vote, okay? No sexy poses here, but joy and enlightenment and cheerful messages to you because I love you. And uh, if you want to make a change, you know, make that change. Um, um, you know, we're talking about the man in the mirror. <laughs> we're asking him to change his way. Oh, listen to that. See, this is why I don't sing and should have more teeth. Yeah, someone's going to put that on TikTok and make a million views. Uh, anyway, <laughs> don't forget to tag me. Follow me from TikTok. That was my crack note. But anyway, yeah, uh, if you're going to make that change, you got to vote. So so go do it. Uh, and Democrats react with dignity. Um, if, if You know, there are some strong views in that in that area. This woman is very, very conservative. And this woman... Uh, it, it belongs into, you know, they say don't bring religion into it, but the reality of it is uh, some of her religious beliefs may prevent her from voting on a certain thing. And I will fight to the death to protect Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade. Okay. Uh, I don't usually get political, but Roe v. Wade is something that's very, very uh, important to me to be upheld because I lived during the time when abortion was illegal. And I heard and, and saw how women suffered as they tried to go to these horrible butchers and abort a baby. We need to keep it legal, okay? Educate, all right? So you conservatives who don't believe in killing and believe in pro-life, I agree. I think your beliefs are valid, but don't do it by knocking down Roe v. Wade. Do it for educating the woman who is thinking of aborting the baby. There's alternatives, you know, but that doesn't mean changing it in the government. Your women's bodies are their body. And to abort a baby is not like ordering coffee, okay? And you men and you men don't know what it's like to carry a child, but you, many of you, um, and there was a beautiful, beautiful piece on um, Daily Mail yesterday on TV about women coming forward and talking about what it's like to lose a child through miscarriage. It's devastating. Women don't make these choices like nothing. This is a part of them. This is their blood. This is their bone. This is their baby. And if they have to give it up, it isn't easy. And many of them are in pain for the rest of their lives. So you stay out of it. Keep Roe v. Wade strong and let the woman make the decision. All right? But educate her. Help her to understand the other options besides the, that one, all right? But the bottom line is, it's her decision, okay? And and that's very important to me. So this is where I have trouble with this 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 new um, this new this new uh, judge lady person. I I think she's completely wanting to reverse it, and I hope she's not. She says she's gonna do. She's gonna look at both sides. She's gonna, you know, she's gonna be open-minded on every place because what she's a judge and that's her requirement. But we don't know till she gets the seat, do we? We won't know till the 
fat lady sings, so they say. So honestly, uh, I do think she's going to get in, and I just hope that she, her mouth is speaking what she means, and she's not just giving a lot of lip service to get that seat. You know, it's not like it hasn't been done before. So that's my feeling there, okay? Usually I don't go there, but I, I you know, uh, just so you know, full disclosure, I chose not to have children when I was 13 years old. Not because I don't like children, but because I was raising my mother. And I thought, I'm done raising kids. You know, I want to be the great auntie. So like, you know, your kids are driving you crazy. You have Terry come over and she plays Lego with them. And, you know, we paint and we draw and we make puppets and we do stuff like that. This is what I want to be. I want to be the auntie. I want to be the sweet Aunt Terry and then, you know, hand them back off to you. I think I'm too much of a kid to raise children. I'm a great person with kids. I love kids. They're amazing little beings. But I realized I'm just a bit too, and you're going to find this, maybe you find this hard to believe, maybe not. But when I was young, I realized I'm just too selfish to raise a child. And it's really great if you make that decision before you have a baby. But we're human. You don't necessarily get to do that. I did. My mother begged me to have children. And my question was, what if I don't like having, being a mom? You know, this is a responsibility and this is a career, 21, 22 years and sometimes longer. So uh, you moms out there, I love you. My hat's off to you, you're rock stars. Those of you who made this your dream to shape the world in the future, I love you guys. I think you guys are amazing. And the same with teachers too who are teaching our young people. Our young people are our future. The kids are our future. Don't spoil them. Don't make them brats. Don't put them in front of an iPhone or an iPad, out of sight, out of mind. That only creates a brat, and we don't want brats to rule the world. We've seen brats. We don't like brats, okay? So help them to understand the importance of being of service, of doing for others. Some kids have come up with just miraculous ideas for helping others. Did you see the kid who sent his baby Yoda to first line responders so that they could be happy every time they looked at the child from the Mandalorian. And now the firefighters carry this little Yoda. They take turns carrying this, this baby Yoda, child, whatever, through the, the fires. They've adopted him. A child did that. Okay? So just because, you know, there used to be a lot of people, you know, I think a lot of housewives and mothers apologize for being mothers and housewives they go wow my career is kind of lame i remember one who said that she knows who i'm talking about the point is you it's not lame it's one of the biggest most thoughtful giving things you can do is to raise a new uh, raise the new generation so i'm so i my hat off to you i love you guys and i'm there to help your kids feel better to keep kids from being bullied to let kids know that they have a right to be here, they're worthy of their dreams and goals, and uh, I'm here to tell you, okay? I'm a kid too. Don't give up, guys. The world is not as dark as many paint it because you're in it. So because you're in it, you can make it better, okay? And remember, remember, please remember my definition of an artist, okay? A definition of an artist is those who are passionate for what they like to do. So if you're an accountant and your passion has always been numbers, you are an artist. Your paintbrush and your palettes or your pumpkin carving tools are numbers. And don't belittle that because I'm not good painting in numbers. I'm not good, so I hire an artist like you to do it for me. If you are someone who cleans homes and houses and someone has treated you like you're something they scraped, they need to scrape off of their shoe, it is not shame on you, it is shame on them because you are not less of a person because you've decided to clean houses, especially if this is your passion. Your passion might be cleansers and mops and, and uh, disinfecting, but aren't you the rock stars of 2020? If it's not for you dedicating yourself to making areas safe for us, we wouldn't be able to vote in person. We wouldn't be able to eat in restaurants. We wouldn't be able 
to do a lot of the stuff that we do now because of you, those who clean and disinfect in the world. And thank God for those artists, those who take a mop, a pair of gloves, a scrub brush, and a mask, and get to it. I want to thank you because that is not me. I have to concentrate on it. I clean house like I got to go sculpt somewhere. So I hire people like you, artists like you, to do it, who make my house cleaner than, we, than before I bought it, than when I bought it. Okay? So I can go through every profession. If you don't believe me, challenge me. All right? Because you are an artist. Just understand your tools are different. My doctor yesterday said she wasn't an artist. Get this. This is a great story. My doctor, who is amazing, she's a rock star, says to me the other day, "You, I just don't have the patience to be an artist. I think artists are amazing. I couldn't sit for six hours and, be, and patiently sculpt a pumpkin. I couldn't do pumpkins over and over again. Really? Really, doctor? Are you kidding me? So what are you saying, doctor? Are you saying that it, it, your, the, your profession as a doctor doesn't require patience with your patients? And she just stared at me. And her nurse, her, 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 her associate nurse went, <clears throat> I said, I hit a nerve, didn't I? Because you take a lot of patience. And here's the thing about a doctor. Now, a doctor can usually be a lot more straightforward to you, but their assistant, their nurse cannot. And you can imagine the patience it requires for first-hand responders, first front-line workers to not say, will you just wear a mask, you jerk. They can't say you jerk. They have to be polite. Okay? So I turned to them and I said, I hope you all have a closet so you can go. Or maybe what you need to do is this. Ah! In the pandemic, you can bet there are people out there, and maybe it's you, that just needs to lock yourself in a closet and scream. And there's nothing wrong with that. Okay? There's nothing wrong with that. You come out, you breathe, you go meet that day again. Okay? But that's what I'm talking about. Every single one of you out there that's passionate about what you do is an artist. You want to debate me on it? I challenge you. You will lose. You will lose. Everyone, if they are passionate about what they do, is an artist. The passionate teacher who versus the, who versus the teacher who thinks it's a job. What? The teacher's watching the clock like the kids. That ain't a passionate teacher. That's not an artist. The parent who sticks their kid in front of a TV set, an iPad, or an iPhone because they don't want to deal with the fact that the kid is screaming. And the kids are smart, guys. You know they're smart. They, you know, you, you can learn your marketing techniques from a child, right? Seriously. So uh, don't be a lazy parent. Be an artist parent, okay? I've seen them. They're magnificent. One of them is my best friend, Lynette Eklund. She and her... her her husband, Jim, have raised three beautiful boys, and they are amazing. Or my friend, Liz Reed, and her husband, they have raised beautiful children. Polite, wonderful, all about doing for other people. Okay? It's not an easy thing to do. You know how teenagers are. I do, too. I, my stepson, I'm, I've been... I helped raise my stepson since age six. And boy, when he was a teenager, we could thank God because he was a wonderful teenager. Actually, he was a little raid. He was a little more challenging after he was 21. Thank God they are annoying while you still have a say in their lives because once they hit a teen, see ya. So I'm just saying, it, you know, you take your, your job seriously. You're passionate about your job. You are an artist. All right? And those are the people I want to be around. I have a dentist that's a maestro. I would go to no other dentist in the world. I would, oh, he's so, oh, he's so wonderful. He's so amazing. Taught me that I have to brush my teeth five times a day, not three or two. Or what is it? Anyway, <laughs> I get three in, but he wants me to do it five times. He says, that's what you should do. When you wake up, when you go to sleep, after you eat breakfast, after you eat lunch and after you eat dinner. Oh my goodness, I'd be brushing my teeth all day. But I work hard to do when I get up 
after breakfast. I haven't eaten today, so no after breakfast. Uh, before dinner and after dinner. Those are the ones I really shoot for. Lunch is a little challenging for me. But he also says you can have a dry brush and kind of, you know, go over your mouth or, you know, something like that. But he really does say it's got to be five times. And he's got these amazing pearly whites. Of course he does. He's a dentist. So he's an artist too. He's really, really brilliant. And his name is Dr. Uh, Dr. George Montez in North Hollywood. You want to Google him, M-O-N-T-E-S, if you have uh, fear of dentist. He and his wife, uh, Teresa Romero, are amazing. And uh, Dr. Montez rescued, actually was responsible for helping the police officers. You remember the Bank of America in North Hollywood that had the guys that looked like they were action figures that were shooting up the town back way back in the end, probably before some of you were born, all right? But if you Google it, it was a horrible, horrible bank robbery in Bank of America. And these guys were dressed like action figures. And the police had no way to fight them because they had this amazing, they had automatic weapons and they, they had suits that were unbelievable. And they were just like, you know, they were like Iron Man kind of, only the bad side. And, uh, and so one officer was hit badly and uh, he was in the line of danger. And Dr. Montez grabbed him and... and uh, a lot it ran out and helped the other officer bring him into his dental office and then helped him uh worked with him to stop the bleeding and understand he's a dentist he's not a doctor but he did the best he could until the emergency services could come and save this guy's life my dentist yeah amazing amazing man all about giving and he has an amazing family all about giving so uh so if you're a mom or you're a teacher and someone tells you oh really like it's no big deal. You you step up on your hind legs. You don't apologize because you're an artist and artists are special. Okay? You stand up and you look at them and say, you try teaching your kid. <laughs> you try. During the pandemic, many had to because the nannies of the world couldn't come in and take care of the kids, could they? Parents were going crazy because they had to deal with the children they had had. Just saying. Respect that nanny. Respect that teacher. Thank them. Take good care of them. Love on them. They deserve it. Okay. How do we get that from the uh, question about the uh, uh, Barrett's, Barrett's confirmation? I don't know. But that's why you watch me. <laughs> All righty. Uh, any thoughts about the, comp the competing... Presidential town halls last night. Yeah, okay. I had to talk to my husband about this because I wondered why, you know, usually television stations stay neutral. Am I wrong here? They stay neutral. And all of a sudden they decide to host it. Well, my because NBC is, NBC Universal is the place my husband works for. And they said they they hosted uh, Donald Trump because it was big money. That's my husband said. He says big money. Maybe he didn't say that. But, uh, the NBC said it's big money, I guess. All right. But the point is, uh, you know, you are a radio. You are a, you are a television station, and uh, as a television station, you are in to maintain yourself. And by maintaining yourself, you. Uh, you you host because it's everybody's going to be tuning in. You know, if you can host Biden and you can host Trump, everybody's going to be tuning in to Biden or Trump. So you want to grab that that viewership. So understand this is a business, guys, and a business does that. So I don't know if they're actually making a stance on who they're following. I don't think so. At first I thought maybe they were, but they're not. So um, I would have loved, I would have rather them had debates in person. I kept thinking in person they should have debates like, you know, like I said before, put them each in a booth and then they're completely safe from COVID. And then if they start to go over their minutes, you just cut the microphone and then they're, you know, and then they'll get it and they'll start to comply, right? They may be angry, but as we saw during the vice president's debate, they agree to the terms with the commentator. And then they ignored them. But the point is that they originally agreed. So if the commentator cuts the mic, 
And then as a presidential candidate, you say, oh, it's their fault. They shouldn't have done that. It's not because there's always an agreement before the debate happens. They agree. They just don't necessarily follow through. So there you have it. Uh, any thoughts about, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you still hopeful for a final debate? Yeah. I am. I am. I would love it. But like I said, do booths. And then make sure that the guy in the control tower, control tower controls the mics. That's the way I would do it. You know, you step into the booth and there they are completely safe from COVID-19 and they can do their thing, you know. And that way we as voters can actually hear what their plan is, you know, and stop the stuff, you know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> do you think... The NBC moderator was too Trump on Trump uh, tough on Trump. I'm gonna not say anything on that. Their job, well, okay, I'll say one thing. Their job is to be tough. Okay, so you're gonna have if you only have one person, and I'll bet you this moderator would have been tough on Biden had they been together. You see what I'm saying? When one station has just got one guy, the appearance looks weird. Okay, and here's the thing about appearances, guys. I, I don't know if I said this the other day, but on the Ask Me Anything, I'm going to elaborate on it. Okay, you are running for president. If this is what you want to do, imagine you are running for president. All right. You're not perfect. You're a human being. Okay, you've got your idiosyncrasies. You've got your, your challenges. Honestly, as my friend said, you get your feelings hurt. Because you are human. When somebody says mean things about you, you can't help but have your feelings hurt. Okay? So that's one. Two is you may have challenges that you want to overcome. You're not so sure if certain challenges uh, you let out. Maybe you had a uh, 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 medical challenge, a uh, uh, physical challenge, a... Uh, uh, you know, something in your life that, that you were bullied for and you got, you overcame it. And now it doesn't mean that that's gone away. It means that, that, that you're, you've got it under control. Okay. For the most part. So now you've got to decide, do I let that out? If I get flustered, do I let, do I give into that? It could come back or do I try to just keep myself composed and move forward? Okay. That's number two. So now as the presidential candidate, you're trying to know that you're human and what they're saying hurts your feelings. And you maybe you ought to be stoic, which I don't think you do need to. I think you could be honest and say, this is hurting my feelings, so let me deal with it or whatever. Number two, if you have any kind of challenge, you're trying to be old, superhuman, which you don't have to be. We want you to be human. Okay? We know you know, don't know everything. But do you say you don't know everything? Because people are watching out here. And you don't... I mean, can you say... What you show and what you don't, when you're on a public, th you know, what do you show? And, you know, you got to worry about that, you know, and um, take a look at the presidential, uh, at the, um, um, the vice presidential, sorry, sorry, I'm just, <sighs> the vice presidential race where you've got a woman and a man, okay, the man has to say, how far do I go to attack before people are going to think I'm bullying a woman? Don't think this wasn't in his head. And she is thinking, how much do I allow follow the rules by staying in my two minutes? Or do I allow them to say something that I know is just absolutely not true? Because if I let it go because I'm following the rules... Then do I look weak because I'm not defending myself under what I know is slander, all right? On either side. This is where, so now you've got to tell people your plan on national television, all this is going in your head. How do I look on camera? Am I standing right? Is there a fly on my head? Is there not? I mean, you know, really, everybody picks the fly after you've studied so hard and so long to give your, 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 your address. I don't care which side you're on, but everybody pointed to the fly. You know, he must have got off the air and said, ah, crap. You know, <laughs> stupid fly. I mean, it's a total drag. 
And then on the other side, she's trying to follow the rules, but if she lets him say some of the things he said about her, which was absolutely lies, she would have looked weak. So you've got all of this in your head, in your body, and you're still trying to look cool and be strong. And then you've got the commentator, all right? So now, because you're on different channels, the commentator is doing what they do best, which is firing you the hard questions. Because there you are, alone, in the catbird seat. No one to take the camera off you. It's just you. All you for a couple of hours. And the commentator is because that's their job. So this is why we like to have two. Because you can see that the commentator is equally as aggressive to candidate A as he is to candidate B. But we didn't have that, did we? So you guys as viewers, remember this. Commentator's job. Okay, we want to get down under your skin because we want to know your plan. You're telling us the plan. The commentator says, but wait. On this particular date, you stated this. What do you say about that? And then if you skate it, it's the commentator's job to go, whoa, whoa, whoa. What did you say about? What do you, uh, 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 uh. you see what I mean? But with one person, a person, you know, when you have two candidates, you have four candidates, you have other candidates, you can take your time while the other candidate is answering to not only listen to what they're saying, but to reset, you know, if, you know, but there's no time to reset on either side. You got it. You just got to be on, 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 on for two hours. I'm on for three hours. This is natural for me. I'm naturally a yapper. So this is what I'm saying to you. Okay. This, this saying cut people on camera a break. This is not an easy thing to do. Those of you who don't want to be on camera, there's a reason you don't want to be on camera. You know, and politicians, psh, yikes. So I don't like that separate stuff. I don't like it. I want to know how the candidates react to what people, each other, they say, you know, so that they can re rebuttal. And um, in case it's a lie, because, you know, politicians lie about each other. And I think it's, if somebody is saying an, a mean, nasty lie about you, you have the right to rebut it, don't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those are like, uh, I don't know. I mean, I kind of liked them because we could kind of see a little bit about their plan. But honestly, I want to see them both together. And I say the booths would work great and then turn the microphone off if one overpowered the other person so that we can hear both. We have two candidates because we're a democracy, not a dictatorship. If we want a dictatorship, we'll just let one talk and not let the other talk ever. And that's what you're gonna have. Is that what you want? Ask yourself, okay? Seriously ask yourself, what is it you want? I personally want a candidate that, has, that, that makes me and my country first. Put me and my country first. Don't put your own agenda first. Tell me your plan to take care of me as a senior who might lose my health care. I would love it if you had a plan to help me keep my health care as I go into my older years where I need my health care. Okay? That's what I want to know. Protect Social Security. Protect Medicare and Medi-Cal and Medicaid and all those medis. You know, I paid into security all my life, social security all my life because they said it would be there to protect me after I retired. What are you going to do about that? Candidates, what are you going to do about that, huh? I'd like to know. I'd like you to address these issues, please. Global warming is global warming. What are you going to do about that? Huh? I just want questions answered. Okay? Answer the flipping question, please. I don't want to watch you skate. Because in our heads, we think this is what, this is what politicians do. Ho! Hey! Saturday Night Live is pretty funny. But it's funny because it's everything we don't want to see. Okay? So, um.
<laughs> okay. Uh, if Biden and the Democrats sweep in the November elections, should they look to add more justices to the Supreme Court? Honestly, is that the plan? I know it's kind of an uh, rumor that they might want to do that, but is that the plan? Okay. I want to know the plan. And I want people to be able to speak about what they're going to help our country with without being interrupted. Okay? That's what I want. What do you think about President Trump's continued large-scale rallies featuring hundreds of people not wearing masks? What did I say about Disneyland not opening? Luckily, I don't think he's had one in California yet, but what did I say about Disney not opening? I'm talking to the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. No message could be any clearer. No message could be any clearer. If you want to make a change, it starts with you. It starts with you. It starts with you. You want Disneyland to open? You want to go back to your lives? You want these people to keep their jobs? I'm talking to the man in the mirror. There's my answer to that. <sighs> okay. Uh, are you fearful that Trump will not commit a peaceful transition of power should he lose the direct election? Isn't everybody? Remember, I used to work for the guy. I always wonder if you won't answer that question. A lot of times when you won't answer that question, it means you won't do it. So, I want to think, I want to think that he is the President of the United States. And that as the President of the United States, if the people speak and he's no longer the president of the United States, that he acts like the regal office that it is and he steps the heck down. That's what I hope. You know, that's what I hope. I don't want petty fighting. And I don't want to feel like like it's more about you than it is about the people. I want to know that the candidate I vote for has got me and my country in their heart and puts us in the front before themselves, before their families, and before their own life. That's what I want. If I could find a candidate that would simply say, I have a plan because I'm about you and really live it authentic. Okay. You want me to pull it back a little bit? YouTube channels. All right. I think I mentioned that there were several you high end YouTubers that are five million, million people following them. Six million people following them. The Kardashians just celebrated like a trillion people following them. Um, one of the things about followers is that you need to be authentic for your followers to continue to follow you. Authentic meaning you have to be you. You can't all of a sudden put a ball on your nose and spin it unless that's what you do. But the point is you need to be authentic. That's what I'm looking for, an authentic candidate. Someone who speaks from their heart and really has us in the, you know, in, in their heart and in their mind, you know. My mother believed this was John F. Kennedy. 
The world wept when he died. The world. So uh, I was young. Um, I loved the Kennedy family because my parents did, but I didn't know much. I was, what, eight? But she loved them. And I've met the Kennedy family. Not John, of course. But they're wonderful people. They're beautiful people. All political. Yes, they have their views. Yes, they have their... They, they don't agree with everybody and they can't please everybody. This is what I've been saying. For those who love John F. Kennedy, there's those who didn't like John F. Kennedy. For those who bring up all the things that John F. Kennedy did, the others will bring up all the things that John F. Kennedy didn't. It's the same, guys. But I think you should look in history and find out why, why was he so loved. You know, he was very much loved. And so, you know... I just want someone who just shows heart. Yeah. Show me your heart. Don't be afraid. Show me the real you. You know, be the president who's really going to show. He's a little human. He's not Iron Man. I don't want Iron Man in the office. I want a human being who feels, who gets sad, who gets happy and has a conscience. Eh, that's a lot to ask for. Okay, we'll stick it to sad and happy. All right, okay. Um, does the idea that Trump appears to be endorsing herd immunity bother you? <laughs> does he mean herd immunity or herd immunity? <laughs> yes, we have herd immunity. I heard it right here, I heard it. I mean, seriously. This is one part of Trump that drives me crazy because he opens his mouth before the brain kicks in when it comes to COVID-19. First of all, you're saying you have the antibodies you don't even know. Second of all, you're saying that you're, you're cured and you're fine and it's not even 14 days. Listen to your advisors and your doctors. You don't have to elaborate on COVID-19. We've got doctors to do that. Let them do it. Okay. Uh, what do you think about California Republican Party putting out its own... <laughs> yeah, what about that? You know what I loved about the Republicans, though? They admitted to doing it. I thought they were going to say, no, no, I didn't, what, what are you talking about? I didn't do it. But they, they, they owned up to it, didn't they? Because they thought they, they had the right to do it. No, 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 no. Uh, you know, after, after you know, Trump's, uh, a lot of people for Donald Trump and Donald Trump seems to be saying that voting by mail is dangerous and, you know, your vote, your vote can be messed with. You got the Republicans admitting to putting these boxes out. E, 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 e. But yay to the Republicans for admitting it and then getting the boxes the hell off. Because you know what? I, uh, I couldn't believe that. You know, one of the things I was very grateful for is they didn't duplicate the actual boxes, you know. They didn't have an artist come out and paint the boxes like the ones that are the official boxes and set them nearby and guess which one, you know what I mean? They did not do that. They made them very clear, ugly, gray, black boxes like a trash can. And if you put your vote in one of those, it's going to go like a trash can into the wrong place. Don't do it. And I'm really, really glad that uh, finally... They said, that is against it. Do not do that. That's against the law. Get rid of those. Don't you dare collect ballots from people in an unauthorized area, unauthorized, in an unauthorized way, no matter what party you're from. Don't do it. So I'm very, but I, but I will say, I really thought that the people that put those boxes out were going, no, it was him. What me, what me, what me. So I admire them for stepping up and saying it was us. And, uh, and, and, and I don't know if they said, okay, we won't do it, but I know they won't do it. But at least you guys know that if you're going to drop your, your, your ballot in a box, that it's about the size of a baby elephant and it's yellow and it has the seal on it and it has all kinds of information all over it. And it's usually in a government place. It's usually in a place like a library or a park or stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that they called this one out. You know, foul. 
you know. So, yeah. Okay. So we are at two hours, just about, in about 45 seconds. We're going to be at two hours. So what I'm going to do, it is now 11.22. I'm going to answer some of the questions you never get to. I'm going to add or two or three of those so that we can be more, yeah. I know the election and, and, and COVID and all of this is something that seems to just come like this and just grab a hold of you. And then before you know it, it's your hairstyle. Uh, no, I'm kidding. But the point is, is it, it's just it is at the front of mind, isn't it? And it needs to be because we got to vote and get through November, find out uh, who our president is, and then and then... You know, I'd really like to keep dealing with COVID because I, I, I think <laughs> Disneyland needs to be open more than ever right now. And I'd like to see us work hard to get that done. You hear that, Lakers fans? And those of you who are Dodgers fans, do not repeat what the Lakers fans do, have done should the Dodgers win, okay? My cousin said they're playing, so I'm trusting that they're playing. And I don't know how they're doing, but if when they win, please... Responsibly, celebrate responsibly with intelligence. Don't keep us in purple, please. I'm begging you. Okay. Fun stuff. Da, 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 da. Uh, if you had a bowling league team, what would you name it? Dragon's Lair. Yeah, the dragons of Dragon's Lair. Huh? Huh? <laughs> you knew that was coming. Uh, who do you most admire and who is your muse? So many. Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn. Huge. Jim Rohn. If you guys don't know who Jim Rohn is or you haven't listened to Jim Rohn, R-O-H-N, Google this man. He will change your life and he's been dead since 2009. He's amazing. He is inspirational. He is so profound in his speaking that he brings tears to your eyes. He is an amazing, amazing, amazing mentor. And uh, yeah, yeah, I just love, love, love him. Another um, um, person that I admire is uh, Sidney Poitier. I met him uh, while walking. Uh, I ran into him almost literally on the beach of Venice when he was getting his, his achievement award. But Cindy Poitier has been called some names because of some of the choices he made in acting. I disagree. I think he is an amazing man. And the more I learn about him, the more I admire him. And when I saw Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, it made me as a little girl just feel so, so special. Because it's about a white woman who falls in love with a black man and the parents are having a little trouble with it. But those are my parents, guys. And I am that child that they said, what are the kids going to be? You guys get married. You're going to make the kids suffer. Well, I, as a kid of a white mother and a black father, will tell you, yes, I was bullied, but I did not suffer. If I suffered, it made me the strong, aggressive tigress that I am. I don't take no for an answer, and I don't quit. And I'll always tell you the truth as best I can. Okay? I refrain from telling you which direction I swing politically, not because I have no voice and I have no stance, but I don't want to do it here. I don't think YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter are the places to be doing this. I don't like it, so I won't do it. And I'm strong on that couple little tweaky things like that but I don't want to be all this stuff because I I want it to be the joys in life we don't have a lot of joys right now we are terrified as a country and as a world we can get those terrors away from us for a while but they keep coming back don't they so it's my job to keep you happy and upbeat and feeling good about yourself why because you deserve it you're a human being, you're not a goose. Jim Rohn, by the way. Remember what I said about the goose. When it comes time, the goose has gotta fly south for the winter, even if he doesn't wanna fly south for the 
winter. Even if he likes cold, he can't. Wait, I don't want to go. But I'm a goose. I must go. Rats! Oh, man. But you are blessed with being a human being, which means if today is not so great, tomorrow can be better. You have the power. You're magical. We're magical. So why do I talk for close to three hours? Because we're magical, and I want you to understand you are very special. Each and every one of you is unique. God chose you to be a human being. Let's celebrate celebrate the vessel and be about each other. We have the power because we love each other and because we're human beings and because we're awesome. Every single one of us is awesome. If you're out there not feeling awesome very well, I'm looking at you right now. You are. You deserve to have your dreams. You deserve to have a nice life. You deserve what you want in life. Don't let anyone dictate your life to you. Don't let anyone tell you what your life is going to be. If you have a great idea and someone laughs at you, remember the pet rock. Whoever thought that was going to be wonderful and amazing? But that person didn't listen to other people laughing at him. He just kept a little quieter. And then success is the greatest form of revenge. Jim Rohn again. So Jim Rohn, huge, huge to me. And Martin Luther King, a man who could love at the, at the pinnacle, the epiphany, the worst adversity our country had seen. Politicians getting assassinated left and right and then him. And yet he still led with love. Martin Luther King, oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Just, just saying his name is a joyful noise to me. It's just, oh my gosh. Oh, he's so amazing. So amazing. Mother Teresa. Whoa. Whoa. Michelangelo, who was kind of a curmudgeon, but he's brilliant. And he's been my art mentor without even knowing it all my life. So those are some. If you want to have more down-to-earth ones, those are my lofty mentors. I love my lofty mentors. I also love mentors like the guy who started Kinko's and uh, what is it? He does a, I, what is his name? I know if uh, Craig Doeswalt, who's another great guy, was here or Tim Gillette, they would be able to remind me about this guy who did this uh, barbecue sauce. He started under a, um, a tarp with a hot plate and cooking chicken and made this beautiful barbecue sauce and now he's a household he's a billionaire because he he started that little business he didn't give up and he's awesome and i can see his face and i can see his cute little round body but i can't remember his name it's just not there oh lord it's a good thing i'm 63 and not 15 um but yeah he's adorable er ernie anyway he's great he's just great and, uh, and you hear his story. You love these rising above the ashes story. You know, you, you, you love where people have, you know, really had hard times, but they just saw that vision in the distance and they just kept going. They just kept going. They just, I know, you know, people laughing at him. Why you? Why you? And they just kept, they just kept swimming. They just kept going. That's you, you know. You deserve it, you know. But God is going to test you, man. You got to keep going, you know. God's going to go, Poof! and then you're going to have to decide, you know, am I going to get up or going to stay on the ground and, and get up, dust yourself off, go, 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 because you deserve it. You know, that's, that's what I like. That's what I, that's, that's what I need to encourage you to do. Try something new, do something new. You can do it. There's all kinds of people on YouTube who are sharing now and doing some amazing things. And don't worry if your first time is not so great, just keep it up. Just keep it up. Right. I, t I told this story uh, about uh, knitting. We, we, I was on a wonderful uh, podcast interview. She said she's going to drop it Sunday. The Disney Dream Girls, if you, if you haven't watched this or listened to this podcast, they are lovely, Jane and Michelle. And uh, we talked about knitting because as a little girl, I wanted to knit. Uh, my, gran my grandmother wasn't a fan because she really didn't like approve of my mother marrying a black man. 
but my uh, auntie, my great aunt, did. And so she painstakingly sat with me and taught me how to knit. Years later, uh, my favorite thing to knit are socks. Many knitters go, oh gosh, not only is this a double pointed needle, meaning there's no little stopper at the end to save you, but it's four of them and you have to knit two. And so I knitted a pair of socks to celebrate my aunt. She was in her 90s at the time. And I took her this pair of socks I had knitted. It was my hundred and... I made like 50, 48 pairs for my, my um, friends and relatives one time for Christmas. And um, for her, I think it was my hundredth pair or something like that. It was, it was, you know, whatever. She loved them. Well, a few years later, she passed away, and I went to her service, and uh, the caregivers who had been taking care of her in their last few years brought me a box. And they said, this is from your aunt, but we want to warn you, the socks aren't in there. She was buried with them. So you really never know what you're going to do that's going to really touch someone so deeply. Actions speak louder than words, don't they? Inside the box was a 1950s patterns and some of her little granny squares that she had made. She had willed to me all her knitting needles and, and, and stitch savers and all of that. And those of you who know who knit know what I'm talking about from my aunt. She, she gave those to me. She willed those to me. And to this day, they're still in the box and they're still there. And I pull out the squares and say, I'll make something someday. But she really used scratchy yarn. <laughs> Back in the day, she crocheted and knitted. Um, the yarn wasn't soft. Now we've got such luxurious, wonderful yarns, you know. But what I'm saying is that that uh, we talked about the joy of doing something nice for someone. You know, that's where we really can feel better. You know, when you're locked inside your house, do something nice for somebody. Nice note, a nice word, a smile. You know, I think I mentioned that, uh, maybe I didn't, uh, on Monday we had, uh, uh, we were in a mel of a hiss and, uh, my husband was stuck at the pharmacy when his car wouldn't start. So I went down to help start it and it wouldn't start. So we called AAA, love AAA. And I called the dispatcher to get a truck sent out and her name was Hope. Did I tell you the story? I went, what? When she answered the phone. How may I help you? The angelic voice came over my receiver. How may I be of service? This is hope. I said, oh my gosh, I need hope. How lovely that I got hope on the phone. There was a silence just like this. And then she said, thank you. And I said, no, thank you. How lucky am I? How fortunate am I? I need help. I need hope. And hope comes to my rescue. After we had talked and she had dispatched the truck and made sure we were safe as they always do with AAA, she thanked me for making her day. Why is being so nice on the phone making someone's day? Shouldn't it be the norm? Shouldn't we all be like that? Shouldn't we strive to make everyone's day a little less complicated and a little less annoying? Now you know why I talk for close to three hours. I think you deserve it. I'm a busy girl. Trust me, I'm very busy. I got the stuff boiling up. But many of you have said this has helped. Many of you have been so kind to write to me and say, I thought you were talking to me today. And, and that's good. That's really, really, I, I thank you for that. Thank you for taking the time to write to me and tell me that. You know, because I'm on it to answer your question to help you feel better. I want to help you feel better. I hope I am. And if I'm not, well, you know how to change the channel, don't you? <laughs> I won't be upset. Like I said, you can't please everybody. Right? But I love you as you leave. You know, please stay. And while I'm at it, would you please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that little bell? I'm told this is important. So please do it. 
Anyway, I'm going to work harder to give you more content. But if you love the Foster Farms chickens, those little crazy chickens in a beautiful car, and you're, you're somewhere in the Midwest or it's back east and you go, I don't know what it is, I have a playlist on my YouTube channel. You can actually watch as many videos as you can. Then I play the passenger chicken. They're very funny. They'll really make you feel better. Yeah, so go see the fo my Foster, Foster Farms uh, playlist and subscribe while you're at it. I love you guys for that. Thank you. Uh, what is one of your weird quirks? I have no idea what you're talking about. What are you talking about? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> one of my weird quirks. I gotta think a minute. Because my husband, I know he would go, this one. <laughs> My mother would say I love the cold, and I was born in California, so what's up with that? I love the cold. I, I have friends that live in Maine who said come out there. I think I would be in heaven in Maine. I went to uh, Utah to turn wood, to do wood turning, you know, on a lathe. And uh, it, it was during the snow season. I asked him if I could do it in the snow season. And uh, I got up at 4 a.m. to uh, ride in the snow plow because I'm like a dog. I, just, I love I love big machinery and riding around in big machinery and that snow plow was awesome as the snow is shooting out and it's it's the moon is lighting the snow with that crystal blue look and uh uh we're in the snow plow at four in the morning and my my host said nobody ever rides with me they're never up we had the best time you know we had the best time um I work a mean bullwhip is that weird <laughs> A really mean bullet. Yeah. Yeah. I work a mean bullet. Uh, what else is weird? Everything about me is weird. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's a quirk, but I have astigmatism, which is why I have to wear glasses. Uh, that's all I have is the astigmatism and it's in my lens. So my mother said to me, oh, you should get LASIK. And the LASIK people said, yeah, not if it's in the lens. Bye. And now that was a long time ago. And now I just don't want you messing with my eyes. I don't need to see. I, I like having glasses. And lo and behold, those of you who wear glasses are being told it helps protect against COVID-19. Who would have thought, you know, most of us being called four eyes and all these names all the time because we love to wear glasses. Uh, and then someone like Elton John goes, ah! <laughs> and we all of a sudden, uh, Ward Kimball, people like that go, we're going to make a statement <laughs> with our glasses. But uh, uh, I like wearing glasses. I really do. Um, I think it's a way, I think you can create all these cool senses of style when you wear these different glasses. And uh, like I said, Elton really showed you how to rock those, didn't he? And it looks like he's gone back to rocking them for a while. He wore contact lenses, but sometimes some choices just don't, don't really work you know the dazzling and he was he, he I think in the beginning I remember watching um the movie that Elton John endorsed about his life uh Rocket Man and uh him in the character saying I don't want to be a clown but I never really thought of Elton John as a clown I just thought of him as a flamboyant performer and I really enjoyed watching his flamboyance on stage it felt as I've said before authentic to Elton John. It, a clown would be someone who's behaving not like who they are. And I really thought he was a flamboyant, larger than life, amazing singer with an amazing friend, Bernie Taupin, and they just made beautiful music. And I just loved that at a time when there was even more uh, conservative behavior that there he was bigger than life, larger than life. Uh, I just think Elton John is a rock star. And I think the same about Lady Gaga. I think that, you know, whether you like her or you don't, the woman identifies Lady Gaga. I am Lady Gaga. This is who I am. This is what I do. This is what I love. And she's very authentic about who she is as is Cindy Lauper, as is Pink. 
they just embrace who they are. And I think they lead from the front by saying, hey, it's okay. It's okay. Be you. You know, you are a beautiful flower. Don't hide yourself under a bushel. Be beautiful. You know, no matter what. You know, no matter what. And I love you for it. I love you for it. I just love it when you come out and you just do it. So when I did these glasses, I wanted to celebrate my good friend Wally, um, I'm Ward Kimball. And Ward Kimball just loved those big, round, beautiful glasses, as did uh, Iris, the fashion woman who just wears the bangles and another rock star in my life, you know. Tim Gunn, who looks so conservative, but he's just so flamboyant and darling and sweet and cute. You just want to cuddle Tim Gunn. Uh, but anyway, the thing is, is that these people embrace who they are, you know. And then you've got someone like Heidi Klum, who really looks like one of those dyed-in-the-wool beautiful fashion models, doesn't she? She's tall. She has the beautiful blonde hair, everything. And then in Halloween, she rocks it, man. She takes months to have her costume created, and it's always something extremely bizarre and involved. And it's just, we just wait, don't we, to see what she's going to do, and it's not always a pretty character. Sometimes it's a very creepy character. Sometimes we don't even know what it is she's coming as. But she just embraces Halloween at that point in her life, and we love her all the more for it because it's that little thing that she likes to do that we never knew that she liked to do. So uh, I don't know what my weird, obnoxious trait might be, but um, maybe it's I have no catalytic converter on my mouth. I don't know. But if I if I come across it, I will address it and answer that again at a at another time because wow, uh, a weird quirk is a weird quirk, right? I, I, the whole thing about me is a weird quirk. This is one of the things I had to learn that I am not like everybody else. So as an actor, when I go to audition in acting, they tell you you're going to find hundreds of people like you. Never happens with me. Okay, one of a kind, baby. Uh, uh, and so I, there are men at the audition, there are women at the audition, there are dogs, there are cats, there are children, there are people over a, over a hundred, there are people under a hundred, uh, and it's basically because the person is looking for something unusual, that's usually me, so, so that is something that you gotta embrace, you gotta embrace the fact that there's no one out there like you, and so, live your life. Yeah. You see, I'm spontaneous about everything. I'll sing. I don't even care if it sounds bad. You heard the creep, the creep later, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, my dad always said, and he is my greatest mentor, my greatest muse is my father. I think I've said this before. My father, my black father said poison isn't effective if you don't take it. So if somebody calls you something and it hurts your feelings, don't embrace that. You know, induce vomiting and get it out of you. Okay? Because until you take that poison, it means nothing but kiss nada. It is not about you. It is about the guy flinging it. And be rubber, their glue, bouncing off of you back to them. What's my favorite way of exercising? Can you tell? Run walking. No. <laughs> I love to dance. I love to dance, which is why I can't have music on when I'm sculpting. Because I'll be sculpting and then I can't. It's hard to work the tools when you're... Woo, 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 woo. You know, so... <laughs> I love it. I love to dance. Anyone that has to dance. And I did the, uh, what is it, Zumba for a while? Because that stuff is really fun. But uh, you have to go to class for it. You can watch it on a video. It's kind of fun. But uh, I tend to right now want to do uh, less cardio, more strength. Uh, I walk about 5,000 steps a day between um, the house and my studio because I keep forgetting stuff. <laughs> oh, it's in the place where I'm not, I say. 
But uh, I do like to dance. That's my favorite form of exercise. And uh, I also run walk because I like those Disney medals. They're yummy. So uh, when we were doing that, I love that. About to do the chalk walk, actually. And if you're interested in donating to the Chalk Walk Children's Hospital, let me know. I'll send you the link. Or maybe I'll post it here if you want to donate. But honestly, I'd love for you to join the team. We are the uh, Mickey's OUAC Walkers. And when you go to the Chalk Walk, Chalk Walk, Walkers, I'll put it up. But but Google Chalk Walk and we're, we're getting ready to do a virtual walk is what I'm trying to say and not doing it very well. Uh, but if you want to join, you can join virtually from all over the world, guys. And uh, join the, join the um, Mickey's OUEC Walkers. They're a wonderful group of people. I love them, and that's my team. And I love my team. Come join us. It's a lot of fun. And now you get to do it virtually. I'm going to do mine on my treadmill. I'm not going to go outside. No, 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 no. Not outside. No, 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 no. You know, Gavin tells me to stay inside. I stay inside. If I'm vulnerable, I stay inside, I stay inside. Yep, my car has had a full tank of gas probably for about two and a half months. <laughs> I think the first time place I went was the doctor's yesterday. Uh, so, <laughs> maybe that's a weird quirk. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and it's been terribly hot here, so I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to be, you know, I'll probably dress up in a cool, in a cool like, I'm going to get my team shirt. Mickey's OUAC Walkers does their own shirts and everything. So I'll have my own shirt and I'll put my my video up there and I'll be walking on my treadmill virtually. Usually I love to uh, be in races because especially where you're doing the half marathon and the marathoners come because, you know, you're finishing up your half marathoner and the marathon have run twice as many miles as you have, and there you are just doing yours still. You're still making your way to the finish line because you're a run walker, right? So what I'll do is I'll turn around and I'll start to talk to the very tired marathoners because a marathon is a commitment. And uh, I remember I had this one guy who he just looked uh, uh, just exhausted. And I said, how is it you look so good and you ran twice, twice as fast? It made him laugh. And he said, oh, man, I don't know if I can make it. I said, you want me to talk to you while you make it, while you go? Because we only had like a mile or two left. It's very sad, you know, to be in a half marathon, to have gone uh, to 11 miles and 13.2 is your goal. But it's really sad if you're doing a marathon and you only have two miles to left. So I, I walked with him. I look for people who are really struggling, who are marathoners, and I walk, and then I do this with them. You got this. Do you realize that you've run twice as far as I have, and I'm I'm pooped, man. I'm really tired, and and they'll just they'll just love it. And I remember this one guy. We were doing the Air Force marathon, and I and I just said I just started telling him stories. You know, do you have a favorite actor? I bet you I've met him. Do you have a favorite television show? Do you like Ghostbusters? I like Ghostbusters. Well, let me tell you what I did on Ghostbusters. Here's what I did. And that's what we did. And before you know it, we went across the finish line. Okay? And I remember him wrapped in that silver blanket because, you know, afterward you have to make sure you eat and then you don't cool down too fast as a marathoner if you're smart. And he said, uh, I got there because of her. I even don't even know her name. But I didn't think I could make it. And then she came. Okay? So to me, I don't know, is that a quirk or not? You know, a lot of people want to do their personal best. My personal best is how many people I can help get across the finish line and get across it too. So it's always those last few miles, you know. Um, I probably run more miles because I'm helping my friend get across and then I'm running back to people. Uh, when Disney had the half marathon the key to a Disney half marathon, if you ever want to do it, and if they ever open them up in Anaheim again, I hope they do, is to get to mile 12. So once you get to mile 12, you could crawl to the last 1.13.1 1 uh, 1 .1 miles. You could crawl and still get your medal. This is because you get on park property. So before 1 o'clock, you need to cross the threshold into the Disney park, and then you can moonwalk if you want. Okay, so on mile 11, I run back and forth amongst, I'm in the back with people, just before the balloon ladies. And um, those are the ladies who are going to scoop you up and put you on a bus. So you don't want those balloon ladies. But anyway, 
Uh, I run back and forth and I tell people, you got this, you got this, all we gotta do is get to mile 12, get to mile 12, get to mile 12, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, little to the left, little to the right, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. So I'm this crazy, insane cheerleader. My friend just laughs at me because I'm a total nut. And uh, I probably, my half marathons are probably 60 miles instead of 13 by 2. But that's because I really feel better if I'm bringing people across with me. You know, people who run a marathon, this is a big deal. People who run races, this is a big deal for them. Maybe they've had a health challenge. Maybe they only have one leg. Maybe they're deaf and blind. I saw a blind girl kick my butt. Um, many have. Uh, <laughs> in racing. Uh, maybe, you know, I remember I did the Air Force, not Air Force, but uh, I did a, a Memorial Day one and a guy did the half marathon in full fight gear. <sighs> Woo, that guy was a rock star carrying the American flag, okay? So you got these rock stars. It means a lot to them to get this accomplished. So if I can help them get across, that's what it means to me. That's what I like to do, you know? I love the joyful feeling it, it feels like uh, to help others. So if you haven't done it, try it, guys. Get out of your own head and help someone else. You will never go back. You will never go back. You will never go back. Uh, what is the thing that irritates you the most, stupid people? Um, how do you identify as stupid people? They uh, judge you by the color of your skin. That's a stupid people. A stupid people decides they like you or not because you are, uh, what? Because of your preferences? Because of your party? They don't like you? Um, to me, that's stupid. You know, love the people because they're human beings. It irritates me the most, people who are not going to wear a mask. They say it's their choice, but what they're saying to me is... When you don't wear a mask in my presence, I know you don't care about me at all. You may say you don't care about you, but that's nothing. This has nothing to do with you guys. It has to do with people that you're around. Okay? It's a lack of respect. If you don't respect me, then I think you're stupid. That irritates me. Do you have a favorite movie quote? Yes, I do. Are you ready? Okay. You'll worry too much. You worry about tomorrow. You worry about yesterday. And here's my quote. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow, a mystery. But today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. Name that movie. You don't have to. I'll tell you. Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu Panda. That's my favorite quote. It's posted. It's posted on my wall. It's in front of me every day. Today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. I love that quote. I love that quote. That's like, that's my favorite quote. That's my favorite quote. That's my favorite quote. Along with, go ahead, make my day. Uh, Clint Eastwood. I want to meet Clint Eastwood. Did I tell anybody, you know, what did I tell you about sharing, your dream, about sharing your dreams? I would love to sit Clint Eastwood down to lunch. I would buy him lunch and just have him for a couple minutes and ask him a couple questions because the man has inspired me throughout my life in films. He's just an amazing filmmaker. He never tires. I just think he's great. And the movie that he was in that really uh, was life-changing for me, I really, really liked it, was Good, the Bad, the Ugly. Uh, so I've got to meet, I got to meet Eli Wallach, and uh, it was amazing. I said, I want to meet Eli Wallach, and two weeks later I met him, and it was just amazing, and I actually got to sit down and have a conversation with him, and then he gave me an autograph picture, and it was just amazing. So now I want to meet Clint Eastwood, and he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to perform, I just have a couple of questions I want to ask. He was very shy when he started out. And uh, and now, I don't know. I just love Clint Eastwood. And I love the Dirty Harry films. So go ahead, make my day. It's my second favorite quote. But my first one is, today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. Over and over and over again I say that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, what is the strangest gift you've ever received? Did you were gifted? No, I couldn't. And I can't say in public what it was. But I have some strange gifts that I've actually sort of liked. You know, like it was really weird and I liked it. I'm trying to remember what it was that I got that was like totally weird. Oh, I know. I got this like really weird gift that I really liked that my sister gave me. It was a knitted mermaid tail. It was like the mermaid tail throw. It's absolutely silly, but I love it. It's really weird, but I love it. You know, you're watching TV and you're like, you're down. Uh-oh, mermaid on the brain. <laughs> burp, burp, burp. Uh, but that was totally weird. That was totally, totally weird. Um, I worked on a TV show called uh, Lost on Earth about aliens who watch a puppet show and think that's what humans are on Earth. It's puppets, so they come down as puppets and realize their terrible mistake. It was a Quincy Jones production, if you can believe that. Got to meet the amazing Quincy Jones, which was quite exciting. Uh, Whoopi Girlberg is another mentor of mine that I love. Uh, she's told me to keep friends that you've known around you that you've known for all your life because they will keep you from your head getting too big So uh, and believing your you-know-what doesn't stink. So uh, she was the one who taught me that, and I've always... She's, she's amazing. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, uh, that the mermaid tail was a, a strange little gift, and... Um, and uh, I was talking about something else, but it just went, whoop. And that happens, too. That's a quirk now that's just. But maybe I'll remember it. Uh, and I didn't regift it. No, I didn't regift it. I'm now regifting a lot of the things that were given to me because as a Disney Imagineer, you get uh, privy to some things that a lot of people don't get. And I could have sold them on eBay, but I wanted to give them to my patrons on my Patreon page because I really am grateful that they're that we're coming together and creating a community of love and support for each other. So to say thank you, I open the treasure chest and uh, and uh, I take those things and I I give them to them. I know they're going to someone who will really love them, and uh, I love doing that. So it may not be a weird gift. It may be uh, I had a lanyard. For example, that had all these pins on it. I know nothing about pins or pin trading, but I get a lot of pins. And these had pins that, uh, you know, for all I know, there could be a million dollar pin on there. But I didn't know. So I just uh, put it in the raffle and one of the one of my patrons got it. And uh, I was really happy to send it to them. And they just they cuddle it. They're all excited. And that, that's great. So that's what I do with a lot of my gifts now, um, especially the Disney ones. I do that. Or I will do a sketch. There was a woman, a young girl, who lost her mother. And uh, her friend uh, commissioned me to do a sketch that speaks, you know, it kind of is, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, represents the mom that she could frame in her house. And I did that. So um, I'm up for it. I love to do, uh, do demos for charities. I love to donate to charity. So, uh, again, it's not quirky, but, you know. Just, you know, you like to give, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Many like to receive, but I, I really like to give. I got a lot of stuff here uh, that's like, you know, needs to move on, right? How do you feel about putting pineapple on pizza? I love it. I'll put pineapple on, uh, I'll put pineapple on uh, broccoli. Maybe that's a weird girl. I love pineapple. Ooh, baby. So, yeah, I have a weird quirk you'll think is weird. I love Dr. Pepper classic. Okay, now you have Dr. Pepper, it's not classic. It's not the old 10, two and four formula. But I love Dr. Pepper classic, okay? But I put peanuts inside. And then I drink the Dr. Pepper with peanuts inside. Have you ever done that? I do that because my dad used to play softball. He's a left-handed pitcher. The ones that people don't like because you never can tell what a left-handed uh, softball is gonna do. But, um, but, uh, my, my dad pitched for a softball team for the, uh, uh, telephone company. He was the first black man to be in, uh, a telephone man in Hollywood. 
they had a ball team and he was a left-handed pitcher and we would go to the games and afterwards as a treat he would take us to the nearest five and dime which is what they called like a little drugstore place and uh, get us a Dr. Pepper, 10, 2, and 4 was on the label, and uh, a little bag of peanuts, planter's peanuts, and you pour the peanuts into the soda, and then you drink the soda. So you might think that's weird, but that's a childhood memory, and to this day, if I drink a soda, it's got to be Dr. Pepper, period. Okay, so I don't drink a lot of soda, but when I have a hankering for soda, it's more a hankering for that feeling, and I'll do that. I'll do the peanuts and uh peanuts in. And now I'm thinking of quirky things because like eating. I like potato chips on my tuna sandwich. So I put the tuna there and then I put the potato chips and I and then I so that's another thing that's kind of weird but I love that. I love potato chips in my on my tuna sandwiches. Yeah. I love tuna. I love fish. Boy. Fish have they're just not safe. I, I love eating fish. <gasps> so good. Now I'm getting myself hungry. Alright. Uh, so pineapple on pizza Love it. I don't eat a lot of pizza, though. Okay, I'm not a pizza person. I'm a seafood person. I love seafood. But I, I don't eat a lot of pizza. Um, and now my doctor says that's a good thing because I have to control my salt intake, and pizza has a lot of salt in it. Okay, what kind of secret society club would you like to start? I think I would like to do a stealthy club that's like the people that are from Project Angel and uh, Meals on Wheels, except for that we're secret, like, you know? So like you, we, we wear, like we're ninja, we're ninja people, okay? And we're a group of extremely wealthy people, okay? I envision us, we're all extremely wealthy and our mission is to explore the world and find those who could use a little financial booth, a uh, boost, boost, financial booth. And we stealthily go in and then we just slip it to them and we say, you have been hit by the angel ninja or the, you deserve this because we know you do A, B, C, and D. We are the ninjas. And we're here to give you this. And it's in a really pretty package. And the experience is beautiful. And they open it up. And it's this gorgeous little thing full of money. Lots of money. You know. I think it's great. I did that when I got my first job as a puppeteer. I toured the Southern California looking for the best waitress. The best server. And I took my friend with me. Because he has a disorder that he can't handle... Um, I think it was yeast and they put yeast in gravy and they put yeast in, in things like that and he loved uh, uh, chicken fried steak and of course the gravy has yeast in it so he couldn't have have the yeast and a lot of times we would go and, and we would go late so we would get in my car at like midnight and we go to these 24-hour places where you find these you find these waitresses that are kind of like eh, what do you want you know you know they're more asleep than you are and we drove around, and uh, I had $1,000. I had $1,100 in my pocket. Well, not in my pocket. But I had extra access. I, I had come and done my first show. I had made a lot of money. I was 19. So one of the things I wanted to do was to share, pay it forward, so to speak. So I took this $1,000 safely, and um, I had access to it. And my friend and I went around to these various restaurants and we would say, this is my friend. He is allergic to the following items. Is there any way he loves Salisbury steak with gravy? Is there any way he could have gravy? And most people, are, no, there isn't. What are you talking about? Our chicken gravy has this, we're da, 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 blah, blah, blah. Some were mean, some were not so mean. Some were kind about it, but basically didn't really work too hard. And then there was a little place uh, in North Hall Sun Valley called Leon's. It was probably about 35 days into my little experiment. And uh, my friend and I, it was 1.30 in the morning, and, and we were really tired. He was really tired, and I was getting ready to take him home when we saw Leon's was open. And we, walked, we said, let's go to that little coffee shop, that little Leon's coffee shop. And he goes, okay. And I said, are you up for a steak? You know, a chicken fried steak. And he goes, oh, I'm not really up for it. But I said, I don't know. I'm just, I got something. Something tells me, boop, boop, that this is the, 
the place we need to do this. So I said, okay. So uh, that's what I did. I went, we went with my friend to Leon's Steakhouse. And, you know, the whole spiel, we sat down. How are you doing? Now, basically, it was just us in the restaurant at this time in the, of the morning. And the waitresses were all in the corner. Do you remember any time you went late and the, the waitresses are kind of in the corner and they're kind of chatting? This is a time when there weren't cell phones. So they weren't looking on their cell phones. They weren't at the computer. They were actually having what we call a conversation, what we do, used to do before COVID, face-to-face. And so there were four of them, they were over in the corner and they were all chatting with each other. And one was kind of leaning on the counter because there was a, a counter and then there were tables. We were at a table. And one was leaning at a counter and she was kind of talking to a friend and they were all like, you know, kind of doing. And we walk in and she turns and she says, oh, you know, and she turns to her friends and maybe she says, I'll get this one, right? She walks over, she has a very smiling face for that time of the day. You see this a lot in Vegas, I would imagine, because Vegas is 24 hours. But at this time in California, not so common. What can I get for you, she said. And I said, well, I said, I'll have X, Y, Z. But my friend loves uh, chicken fried steak. I see you have it. But he cannot have yeast or lactose or whatever it was. And uh, uh, I'm wondering, he, he really wants one with gravy on it. And, uh, and she sat, she stood for a moment, pencil to her lips. You know, I think ours... Excuse me. I think ours has yeast. But I'll tell you what, my husband has the same problem. And uh, I'm not doing anything. So let me go back and see what I can do. What she did was she went in the back and she made her non-yeast, non-lactose gravy for my friend's steak. And she brought it out and she said, my husband has a thing. I have this recipe. See if you like it. And she poured it over I don't care if it tasted like, you know, you know, like cardboard. The fact of the matter was, here's a woman who went in the back, took her own time, gave us her own recipe, and did that for us at this restaurant. I almost burst into tears. My friend did, I think. She walked back and I and we looked up at her. Like like she was she was, she was, we, we could swear she had a halo, like she had a glow, you know? We had been searching for so long. And we said, thank you. Oh, you, you don't know what this means to us. And she said, no problem, no big deal. And I'm happy to do it. You know, it's my pleasure. And off she walked. Now, remember what I told you about artists versus people who just have a job? Was this not a true artist? So we finished our meal. My friend was just very choked up, just couldn't believe it. And I went out and I got my envelope with my money, drew a heart, drew a little picture and a heart on it and said, you win on the front. And I walked up to her and I might get emotional. So this is why you stay till the end or fast forward to this part. But I'm going to try not to get emotional, <laughs> but it's a, it's, 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 a, it's a fun story. Um, we walked up to her and I had this thousand dollars in this, this envelope and a thousand eleven hundred dollars I think I had and I walked up to her and I said uh, we just wanted to give you your tip and we just wanted to tell you uh, a little bit more about us can we and I explained to her that my friend and I had been going for 35 40 days or whatever it was looking for the ultimate waitress the ultimate server the one who did it from her heart and from her soul and I said I'm happy to announce that woman is you and I said I want to reward you for your kindness you never knew what we were going to do this you had no idea we were going to do this but we want to do this for you and we hope you'll accept this gift with grat with the gratitude that we feel and I handed her this brick of an envelope you know you've seen it when people are doing drug deals right but it wasn't a drug deal it was to hand it and she took it and she looked at it and it said you win and she opened it up and she saw all this cash inside and she burst into tears now my friend and I thought she was bursting into tears because who gets a thousand dollar tip for a chicken fried steak and a coffee right I think her bill was like fifteen dollars or something hell of a tip but she collapsed on the stool and she could not stop crying and my friend and I began to realize she was crying for more than just that money 
When she composed herself and was able to talk to us, and we waited patiently, this is when you don't interrupt, she said that she had just heard that her, her daughter needed an operation and the cost for the operation or for her cost for the operation, let's just say it that way, was exactly $1,100. Hey, I did it without crying. I was tears up here though. There it goes. <laughs> Why do I sit here for three hours and talk to you, trying to reach through the screen and to help you to understand how valuable you are to the world? You don't need to give someone a thousand dollars. You just need to let someone know that you're wearing a mask because you care about them. I don't care if you feel strong enough that if God takes you with COVID-19, you're okay to go. But I want you to think if you've got kids or an elderly parent that you care enough about them to wear a mask and to social distance. I can't believe you're that heartless. I won't believe you're that heartless. I loved it. I was 19. It was my first job. The show was BB Beagle. The company was Hanna-Barbera. Puppet show that was trying to capitalize on the fact that the Muppets had stopped doing the Muppet show. Jim Henson had stopped that Muppet show. I was so grateful because it was the more money than I had ever seen and I wanted to share it with someone. I wanted to share it with someone whose heart was big and generous without knowing that there was a reward at the end of it. And I found that lady. And now that lady is crying because she probably said, where in the world am I going to get $1,100? And in the middle of the night, when she stepped up and she said, girls, I got this. And she walked over to us, went back in the kitchen, made that special gravy in the middle of the night, brought it to my friend so my friend could have a good meal. Bingo. She was it. She was it. Don't know her name. Don't know what happened to her. You feel good when you do stuff like that, guys. Don't have to do it with a lot of money, but that's why I would like to be that secret club of stealth ninjas. I think that's why Honda does the helpful, the helpful Honda people, right? Because they probably started the campaign thinking they were going to do it for about a year, but then they started to feel so good about the blessings they were bestowing on people, they just kept doing it. And as a result, I'll bet you their car sales went up. But they led with their heart instead of with their pocketbook. And look what it did. Disney did the same thing with pins. Uh, cast members were not being addressed as people or human beings. They were kind of being ignored. A lot of people didn't necessarily speak to cast members. And then pin trading happened. And Disney thought they would do it for a little while and then maybe move on to something else. But the cast members loved it so much, and so did the guests, because you actually made friends. Now, I'm not talking about Maynard. Maynard is like me. You make friends with phone poles, plants, and everybody because you love people. You love to interact. But I'm talking about you shy ones who, who had to come out of your shell because there was a cool pin there that you needed to trade. And you spoke to that cast member, you found out they didn't bite, and then voila! Disneyland becomes this wonderful place where you meet with your friends and you have a good time. You may not ride rides. It's that fun. So, uh, yeah, so let's do one more question because we are now at the almost three hour mark. So I want you guys to have a life. It is Friday after all. So let's do the last one. What would be the coolest animal to scale up to the size of a horse? 
what would be the coolest animal to scale up to the size of a horse? I'm thinking a chameleon. Can you imagine something the size of a horse that's a chameleon and then they change colors? Like you put purple and then it's a big purple thing and then you put yellow and it's a big yellow thing and you put green and you put and it's a big green thing and then you put a rainbow and it's a big rainbow thing. Chameleons are so cool because they can just do that. Yeah, chameleon. Yeah, chameleon. Yeah, yeah, chameleon. Yeah, yeah, chameleon. What is the sexiest and the least sexy name? Sexiest name in the world is uh, generosity. Unsexiest name is hate. And with that, I love you guys. Thank you so much for these questions. Thank you, Leo, for doing this. Those of you who have stayed this long with me or are watching it later, thank you for your viewership. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and ring that little bell because I understand this is important. You can see that I'm fairly new to YouTube. I haven't really been new to YouTube. I just started learning how to upload YouTube. Uh, forgive me. I'm 63 and an old dog. I'm learning every day. So help me. Uh, follow me on YouTube so you can watch this in your bunny slippers. And then uh, if you have a voice and you want to share it in the way of kindness and strength, check out my Patreon page. Let me just give you a couple of those because I like you and care about you. This is the Patreon page. Take a picture of it and uh, go over there and check it out. My base membership is really uh, very uh, inexpensive and uh, I over deliver just ask other patrons. My YouTube channel please go over there and like I said, subscribe and ring the little bell because uh, I am told it's important. And uh, I would love for you to do that. And you, like I said, you can watch it in your bunny slippers and uh, pick questions and stuff. If I have touched you in any way today, uh, I don't expect you to share this video. <laughs> the person will go, what are you doing? Another novel? But uh, share, your, share how you feel. Post in the comments what touched you what you liked about it and what you'd like me to talk more about. Not longer, but more specific. Or you can just go in the comments and say, when are you doing that little version that's only 10 minutes long? I would love to hear that soon because you have a attention span that's a lot shorter than mine. But uh, this, this understand that the YouTube people that, that uh, teach you things, that show you things, that share things with you and spend time like I've spent with you today, it's not an easy thing to do. It's not that we're expecting you to have a pat on the back, but if we screw up or we slip and fall or we turn into a circus dog for a little bit, share some love, be loving on us and lovingly tell us where we're swaying away. You know, we, we really love your input, both on Facebook and the other. Um, try to give yourself something special to do. Try to do something that has nothing to do with forwarding your career or, or stuff like that. Play with your kids, decorate a pumpkin. Um, do some Lego. Uh, what do you like to do? Bake cookies, you know? Um, whatever is something you want to do that just makes you feel better. Garden. I've heard a lot of people really dream of getting their hands dirty in a garden. Uh, the garden is, you know, you know how people are when they come across a vampire? <laughs> that's my garden. My garden says, no, Terry, that's not what you do. Stay away. Leave this to the professionals. So if that's what you want to do, but my point is do something that's for you. Um, in a time of a pandemic, you really need to, to take care of self. You, you can't love others if you don't love yourself. Take care of you. Uh, my doctor said her favorite thing is to sleep in. I told her take a day and sleep the entire day. Very strong people, very active people have a hard time staying in bed all day and sleeping, even though that may be something they want to do. But I'm telling you, do it once for yourself. It's going to really help you to reset and feel better if that's what you do, okay? Um, many of you feel there's plenty enough time to sleep in the grave, so okay, I get it. But basically, I think that. And finally, if you've been waiting for the Hitchhiking Ghost, at the beginning of this, I told you where to go and how to order them. 
There are 70 uh, spoken for, so there's 30, about 30 that are unspoken for. You can message me and ask me to get a special number or just say, Terry, whatever number's left, give it to me. Give me the lowest, give me the highest, whatever. Uh, so go here. They're on the front page. You click on that, and that is the paid in full. If you want to exercise one of the payment plans, then uh, watch this video. Learn about the payment plans with this video, all about the ghosts, and believe it or not, only 20 minutes long. I know, right? And you can watch it and see what it's about, and then you can message me or email me or whatever and tell me you want a ghost, and uh, we'll set it up. We'll get you a number that you want. I can give you the numbers that are available. You can pick one or you can just say lowest, highest, whatever. Or go over there and uh, say you don't have a number, I'll, or I'll notice you, haven't, you don't have a number, and I'll assign it to you. But uh, if you're going to pay in full, you can go directly to the store. If you're not, you need to communicate with me, and we'll set you up with invoicing, okay? All right. I love you guys. Now what I'm going to do is uh, post. I got so many comments here. There's like a hundred and bazillion gazillion. So since I'm going to be interviewing with Wired, I'm going to have to look at them later. Wired and I are supposed to connect in less than an hour, and I haven't eaten. So I'm going to go get ready for that interview. But uh, I promise next time I'll post some of your comments because you guys are always so so sweet and wonderful with your comments that uh, I'll make sure I say it and I'll make sure I'll answer you and respond to you. Uh, I'll go and find this this feed and do that, okay? I used to do that with my with my iPhone when I was broadcasting on my iPhone because I could not, um, I couldn't read the comments as they went by when I was broadcasting on the iPhone. It was just too small. So I promise I'll go that to you. But uh, go get those ghosts if you want them. Any questions, you hit me up, okay? And I will be in touch. Have a lovely weekend. Monday is going to be, uh, I don't know what I'll talk about. If you have uh, any ideas of something you want me to cover, uh, talk about or whatever, uh, Google me. You know, you can read through. I even have a Wikipedia page. So if you want to do a little Terry Arden research, feel free to do that. And then, and then uh, you know, comment through the weekend. I'll go back. I'll flash back and look. And maybe uh, we'll talk about something you want to talk about <laughs> instead of 100% what I want to talk about. Oh, my tea lasted. <sighs> Tigger and tea. No better combination, eh? Tigger and tea. Amazing. I love you guys. Uh, you know, before I go, quirky also could be bugs, right? Y'all like bugs? I love bugs. So here's a fly. You can't really tell it's a fly. But I, if I find a bug and he's, and he's in pretty good tact, I put him in these little uh, uh, blocks, and that way I can look at them and, and learn about them and see them. So there's the fly. And there he is again. Isn't he beautiful? He's huge. He's not huge just because he's in this block too. This little sucker is huge, which is one of the way, reasons I kept him. Okay. And then I got really lucky and I found this skeleton. This is the exoskeleton of a praying mantis. You knew they had external skeletons and they shed their skin, right? If you didn't, uh, they're, uh, they have exoskeletons and they shed their skin. It's a little, got a little opalescence in there. You can look at it this way, this way. I'm not a spider fan. Um, I love them, but I have to be at a distance. Spiders just give me the willies. Um, I'm better since I own my own home now, but but I really was scared of them. I still am not, not great with them if they're crawling on me. But, uh, but you know, um, yeah. So I have all this weird stuff. Uh, if you want to see more of my weird stuff, just, you know, post in the comments and... Uh, and we'll show you my word stuff. Okay, guys. Uh, you see that I still dwell on questions that you asked me previously. She could ask them again and I'd probably come up with a different answer because my mind is always is always working. It's very challenging for me to sleep because my mind is, is always going. So Herbalife, which is a product that I really love, uh, it has a thing called Relax Now and it actually relaxes my brain so that I can go to sleep. It's a supplement. You know, it's, uh, it's good herbs. So uh, I love them for that. So again, go here, watch the video about the amazing uh, hitchhiking ghosts. 
If you already know all about the ghosts and you love, love, love them, or you want to join my pumpkin sculpting class or load more, this is where you go. Okay? All right, guys. I love you so much. Trust me. Do something nice for someone else. It doesn't have to cost money. It can be a phone card, a little call in, card in the mail, a friendly phone call is what I was trying to say. A little card in the mail, uh, a little card you drop off at their house, you know, fully, you know, protected. And uh, you're going to love it. I love you. I care about you. I hope you know it is the most sincere thing that I can say. There we go. Better lighting. And I hope, whoops, even better lighting. I hope to see you soon. Okay? See you Monday. Have a lovely, lovely, great weekend. And remember, one day in seven for you and your family, your kids, and your wife. All right. Talk to you later.